Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Let's uh, uh, get this ball rolling. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight we're going to do a uh, bit of a uh, uh, designing and, and, and a project. Uh, we're going to make a decorative plate rack. A wall hanging plate rack that's not only going to have a nice uh, shape and all where uh, different size plates can hang on display out in the open on the wall mount but above we're going to have a uh, shelf and then kind of a cubby type shelf area where maybe some bowls and other dishes could go or something like that uh, this is going to uh, talk about uh, layout design we're going to be doing some joinery because we're going to have you know dados and grooves in some of these parts we're going to have slots for the plates and everything to sit in and uh, and everything and so now uh, for the design <coughs> I literally going to be designing it with you here tonight uh, I've got some uh, I'm actually going to be making this project uh, I've got some plates that I want to display let me first talk to you about <clears throat> my uh, plates and everything and uh, that, that I'm gonna have on display so basically uh, these are uh, this is this is one of the plates here uh, this is our large the large plate um, and uh, basically these are uh, you know Joanna Haviland uh, plates out of Germany uh, they have a nice decorative floral pattern with a titanium uh, decorative rim and everything and so I've got the main plate that's what I got to size the the plate holder for um, I've got smaller plates uh, that will go on the rack as well uh, and then on in the cubby in the shelf and everything I have some small bowls that are gonna stack in there uh, is so I need to make sure that shelf is wide enough for those bowls and then I have two different size bowls and, and some cups and things and on. So it's going to be just uh, for this particular uh, uh, pattern wear that I have. Uh, it's going to be a nice, uh, nice decorative display rack. So the first thing I need to do is get some uh, rough measurements uh, of the uh, at least the diameter and the thickness of the plates and everything. And so uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and do that. So let's start about let's talk about the big plate first uh, and everything and everything and all uh, this plate uh, has an overall diameter of roughly uh, 10 to 10 and an eighth inches and um, the plate itself is roughly about one and a half inches uh, from the back to the front and I'm not really concerned about that because the slots that it's going to slit on are going to be down here I just want to make sure that I have enough spacing that uh, you know between the slots and everything that they'll stack nicely now the smaller plates are going to stack uh, you know after the big plate sets uh, then I'll have a place for the smaller plates uh, to sit in there as well uh, the smaller plates are roughly around six inches in diameter and uh, they are roughly around three quarter to seven eighths inches from the back to the front okay now the bowls themselves uh, they're gonna be stacked uh, it, you know uh, in on the shelf uh, probably maybe two or three high or what have you uh, the bowl diameters uh, for me they are five and 
a quarter so I need to at least make sure that my shelf is gonna be five and a quarter let me write that number down so uh, let's see here we got uh, 5.25 and uh, that's all I care about and as far as the height and everything I just want to give myself some good height you know so I can get a few of these you know stacked in when they're stacked on top of each other all right so that is uh, the plateware uh, that I'm going to be designing this off of let me set these to the side oh they don't break there we go all right so this is what we're going to uh, have the play rack now uh, the inspiration from this, this was not my idea. Uh, the inspiration from this uh, was um, I like looking at different Pinterest posts and things and just seeing, you know, getting some ideas of, uh, you know, projects and stuff to kind of go over and how we would approach the design of that project and stuff on the CNC. Uh, the carcass, let's call it the carcass, uh, the outer uh, sides in the middle, there's going to be a center rack, there's going to be three, boom, boom, boom. Uh, those will probably be made out of like an uh, oak plywood or, or something and they'll be edge banded uh, after they're cut and everything will we'll, uh, there'll be some decorative edge banding um, the racks themselves possibly uh, would be solid wood I'll end up uh, probably gluing up some panels uh, and cutting the grooves in uh, with some solid wood oak solid wood or something uh, and then uh, the shelf boards and dividers and all will be solid wood as well. So uh, it's going to be a combination of the two. And the reason why uh, I'm going to go with uh, plywood, uh, a ply of some sort for the outer sides, is let's take a look at, let's get over to our uh, main screen here, our full screen capture. And um, I'll show you... Uh, Let's go over to the full screen capture here and I'll show you an image of uh, the design I would like to uh, emulate and again uh, not my design uh, this is uh, inspiration off of a Pinterest post and stuff uh, that, that just caught my eye and thought you know what that would be great to display in my kitchen you know and and how would we go about uh, creating that you know how would I go about creating that and stuff and so um, the full screen capture should be popping up here in a second there we go and let's uh, let's kind of zoom in on this and take a look okay so we're going to have these the outer body the outer uh, part the center part and I'll call them the rib let's call them the ribs I don't know what you want to call them but uh, of the carcass those will be plywood and they'll be edge banded and everything to uh, hide that uh, plywood edge. Um, this particular image, the whole project is made out of plywood and I don't want to do that. Um, I just, I want to, because of the width of the sheets and all, or, or the width of the this display rack is going to be, um, uh, if I have a, if you have a smaller CNC, you may not be able to do it out of solid wood. And I may because I have a 24 inch by 40 inch cutting area and I've got plenty of room uh, I may do the whole thing out of solid wood, but if you have a smaller CNC um, and uh, and everything, um, you know you'll be able to make the smaller parts and stuff on it. And your larger part may have to be, you know, out of plywood. And I don't know what size has to do with the type of material, um, but uh, you know, if I had to on a smaller table, I could take. Uh, and cut out the individual parts and I could laminate or glue them together if it was solid wood uh, Or I could just cut them out of one full sheet. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, hopefully, you know what I'm talking about and I'm making sense and everything but uh, so this is kind of the inspiration from the design and uh, uh, We're gonna change it up a bit and everything and uh, tailor it to our Desire, okay. All right, so now that we kind of you guys have a visual uh, of um, what's going on and and I believe the, the 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 company that was selling that particular plywood plate rack and all I think they were called Set Yard or something like that but I want to give them a little shout out uh, but it was a it was a Pinterest post um, and uh, I have a hard time I don't know it's like somebody pinned it or something and and everything for CNC project ideas and stuff and I really liked it and that's what I want to kind of go with. So 
Uh, I want to welcome everybody once again for uh, for joining me tonight. I really appreciate you taking time out of your evening to uh, hang out with me. All right. So now, uh, a lot of you know that uh, in the past, I have used... Um, let me get some things closed down here. Uh, in the past, I have used... Uh, SketchUp to help me kind of lay out my design and things and I'm I'm gonna do that again tonight uh, uh, just to kind of get the idea of the design but then we're gonna jump over into the Vetric and we're gonna lay this out uh, I, I think the layouts gonna be much easier in the Vetric uh, for everything but I would like to um, maybe get an idea of uh, the build so you can see it in 3D and stuff and everything. Kind of see the, the, the assembly come together and everything. Uh, so I'm gonna open up SketchUp and I'm using SketchUp version eight. It's a free version uh, uh, online and everything. SketchUp sometimes, you know, they're newer versions and stuff or paid versions and stuff like that. I still use SketchUp version eight, which is a free version. I don't use it for anything other than just visual, you know, to help me layout measurements and parts and all and because I can import those parts into the Vetric software uh, it really just um, uh, helps me kind of visualize get my sizes and things and then get into the software and all so hang out with me while we go through SketchUp I know you don't have SketchUp or some of you know or, or haven't used it or anything like that don't know anything about it don't let that deter you or turn away uh, because we are going to get into the Vetric software uh, this is basically just uh, to get in, uh, get the design down pat or down, you know, uh, as far as all that stuff. All right, so let's get into our current camera view here. I'm going to go to a front view, and uh, uh, my uh, X, Y is the green line, Z is uh, the blue line, X is the red, and everything. So I'm going to tilt this a bit. Uh, so it's kind of a, almost like an isometric view. And let's go ahead and get started. Well, first off, uh, I only need to draw one of uh, these uh, racks in the, or the, the, the middle and the two end pieces. Uh, and then I can copy them. So um, as far as overall height, because my plates are 10 inches and... Um, because my, my, my largest plate is a little over 10 inches, I, I still want some room, okay? So I'm gonna call it uh, about, say, 15 inches before the bottom shelf. And then on the, bot, or on the, you know, on the lower part of the, that shelf cubby area. Uh, and then because, uh, if that's gonna be about 15, and then I'm gonna go maybe another, uh, let's call it, uh, five or six inches and I got to account for my wood I'm gonna go with a 24 inch uh, tall piece so uh, on that um, we're gonna go 24 and then as far as the width coming out from the wall coming out from the wall uh, because my plates are 10 inches in diameter remember it's a diameter and also the, the circles gonna come around I am gonna come out about 12 inches okay so we're gonna go ahead and put in 12 comma 24 and hit enter to get that uh, part there and then I'm gonna push pull this up because it's gonna be three quarter inches thick so I'm gonna pull this up and 0.75 and that's gonna be my uh, piece there okay that'll be one piece now as far as the design goes so let's go over to our tape measure tool here in SketchUp and uh, the base thickness is gonna be three quarters of an inch uh, so I'm gonna go 0.75 uh, and uh, that's where the uh, racks and everything will attach to and stuff. And you know what? Let's let's undo that. Edit, edit, undo guide. Let's 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 go. I want to go. I want a little lip on uh, the. Um, do I want a lip? I want a lip. So a quarter inch lip. I'm gonna go one inch. Okay. So, uh, and then as far as the back goes, um, my back rack is gonna be three quarters of an inch. 
and in that picture the back rack was flush with that cutout and everything you know that circular kind of cutout and stuff um, I don't want my back rack uh, flush and all uh, the back of the rack and everything uh, I don't want it flush so I'm gonna go out um, one and a quarter 1.25 okay and now I can come in and uh, start to lay some things out uh, but let's see here on that 24 inch piece uh, let's see we're gonna go my plate 15 inches let's go 15 inches so 15 enter and then from here it's gonna kind of come out and remember my bowl was at least five inches in a five and a quarter sorry five and a quarter and so I want it to be a little wider, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give myself about, um, if, it, if the bowls were pushed on that shelf and sitting on that shelf, and let's say they were pushed all the way back, uh, because it's gonna be open, the wall will be on the back, unless we wanna put a back plate in there, you know, some sort uh, behind the shelves, but I think I'll just leave it open. But um, I don't wanna be my bowls hanging out off the edge, so uh, if they're five and a quarter, I'm probably going to go six inches, six inches. So let's pull out another guideline, six inches. Okay, let's take our line tool here and let's uh, draw these out. So I'm going to draw a line from here to here, up to here, uh, over and up. Okay. Okie dokie. All right, so now, um, now that I have uh, this... Uh, laid out and stuff uh, I could if I wanted to I could push pull this uh, and get rid of that but before I do I want some I want to add some nice curves so when that plate um, because this is uh, 12 inches wide and I've already taken one inch that's only gives me 11 inches here and my plate is 10 inches so I only have a one inch overhang and stuff but um, on the side here I'm gonna go probably let's grab my tape measure again and uh, let's come in and go about uh, 3.75 inches and then um, I want this to transition into a nice curve so from this guide I'm gonna pull another guide uh, 3.75 inches Okay, and now I can take my arc tool and, uh, you know, from here to here, I can kind of create a nice uh, tangent arc there. And with that, I can go ahead and get rid of this line and that line. Okay, so we got a basically kind of a nice little transition. It's going to come up and now up here. I would like this, they just had a simple arc there, you know, uh, type thing. I would like to add a little bit of decorativeness to it. So um, on, on mine, I'm going to, I'll use the arc tool as well, uh, but I'm going to go from here to here and kind of, uh, let's get a uh, nice little arc going there, and then from there, to here and oh, dang it, tangent stay there okay so now I can go through and I can remove this line and this line so now if I come in and let's get rid of the guides let's get rid of those guides we don't need them anymore uh, let's see here these two here and now I can go in and uh, push pull this and push this down 0.75 inches okay and that's going to be my uh, frame piece so let's look at this camera standard view uh, top so we can look at this uh, from the side let's give this a little bit of um, here let's do this let's triple click on this and make it a component and then let's give it a little bit of uh, wood grain color uh, I don't have the best wood grain selections and stuff, but uh, we'll give it a little bit of color. All right, so let's rotate this around and let's kind of, uh, oops, let's look at our part here. 
So now that's going to be uh, our part. That's going to be our end cap. All right, now let's uh, let's take this part and let's rotate it up. Let's get back into our standard view. Let's go to the front, and I'm going to take and rotate this part. Uh, first of all, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees up, and then I'm going to rot. Oops, wrong way there, Haas. Escape. I need to get my blue rotate. There we go. Rotate it 90 degrees around. Okay. And then I'm going to come in and with this selected, I'm going to use my move tool, but I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to, you know, slide out not only one, but two pieces. Now, um, what I can do is if I know how wide I want my plate rack to be, if I know how wide I want my plate rack to be, I can go ahead and space everything evenly in here. Uh, let's say that I want my plate rack to be uh, oh, let's go a good. I wish I had my tape measure. I left my tape measure in the shop. Um, let's say I want to go a good. Uh, let's see if my plates are an inch and a half thick. Uh, 10. Let's go 20 inches. So if I go 20 inches, if I take this and um, I control and move this uh, like that and type in 20, it'll move over 20. And if I hit X3, um, should move another one, another 20, and I didn't want to do that. Let's put that back and let's uh, delete that one. Let's move this, holding the control key down and go 10. There we go. All right. Uh, 10 should be about the middle of that 20 inches and everything. All right. So now I'm going to have a board. Uh, that is going to be my top plate, right? My top plate. And um, on that top plate, oh, I got another guy straggling way out here. Let me get rid of him. I don't know where in the world he was at. Um, on my top plate here, the plate itself is going to be three quarters of an inch, uh, 0.75. And what that means is, is I'm going to have two rabbits on the inside of each end. And then my centerpiece is actually going to be shorter. It's actually going to be shorter than the two end pieces because it's going to fit into a dado in the center here. So let me go ahead and um, let me grab this uh, part here. And let's go up here and let's go into this and let's push pull this down uh, and you see how when I do that all three you know take on the same thing because they're all three copies of each other I need to make this particular middle one unique so I need to right click and make it unique that means it's all by itself uh, now I can manipulate this one and I want to bring this down to 0.375 eighths of an inch like that okay uh, and um, so that'll it'll kind of rabbit in there uh, like you see here now the end pieces the end pieces of this particular part are going to also recess in for the joinery uh, three-eighths of an inch uh, and everything now the reason why I'm doing that is because I want a, I don't want to see end grain. I don't want this end caps rabbiting into, uh, you know, the top part, the top uh, panel and everything. I don't want to see end grain, so I want to, you know, I want my face grain and all to be exposed and everything. So I want my top piece to join into that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I know it's going to be three eighths, so I'm going to hide this for a moment, and I'm going to push pull this 
out and type in 0.375 to go that 3 eighths. And then that way when I unhide this, you know, you'll see it uh, is going to join in there. Same thing here on this side. I'm going to uh, hide this one. And once again, I'm going to push pull this out and I'm going to go 0.375. And then I can come in and unhide that and all. Now, the cool thing about SketchUp is um, that uh, because I have my three models and then I have my selection and everything, I should be able to uh, select all of my parts and I should be able to right click and do what's called an intersect. I should be able to intersect the faces, the faces uh, with the selection. And when I do that, if I come in here and I Let's take this guy here and let's hide him for a second. Let's see if it worked. Okay, it did not work. It did not work. Um, let's uh, do that one more time. Let's explode. Explode means I'm unmaking it not a non-component now. I'm exploding those three and let's do that one more time let's select that right click and intersect faces with selection and now now I should be able to you son of a gun hold on a minute <laughs> We'll get her here, there, Junior. Hold on a second. All right. I want this guy to be a component, <laughs> great component, and I want to explode this one. Explode this one. Oh, if Jay Bates could see me now, he would be disappointed. All right. Let's see here. Jay Bates is who I learned uh, SketchUp from. So let's see here. Um, Tag coming. Stand by. All right. Let me select. Oh, let me get this camera view correct. Standard view front. There we go. And let me select just this. And if I move just that. Let's go one inch. I can now come in here and select just that face. And, whoa, don't do that. <clears throat> oh my Lord. Bear with me guys, I gotta back up. Okay, let me get back to my three components here. All right, where I made my mistake was, where I made my mistake was, where I screwed up, is I had the wrong thing intersected. So one more time, I need to hide this, and I need to push pull this part out, that three eighths of an inch, 0.375. I had to back up. I had to back up completely. Um, and uh, you'll see why in just a second. Unhide all. All right. So I need to make, I need to select this and make this a component. Okay. Uh, that way I can now safely explode these guys. I was I, I I was a little premature in my exploding. Um, I can now explode these guys because this will be my component. And when I select these parts now, 
um, I should be able to intersect intersect the faces um, and what that should do for me is if I now move uh, this part here you'll see the lines you see the lines that it created for me okay uh, that's what I needed to do and I had I had it backwards so forgive me on that terrible lesson right there all right now I can go in and push pull uh, my um, part and I can get rid of that rabbit I can push pull my part and get rid of that top half I can push pull my part and get rid of that rabbit and now I can come in and select my individual parts and make them components again and it's a triple click basically and then the letter G to create components now I can come in and move this part back and snap it right there and I'll have my joinery and everything um, and okay now I need to come in and I need to go three-eighths of an inch up on this part on this part and I'm gonna take and draw a line straight up to there over and down and let's go in And I'm going to push pull this part. Oops, the wrong way. Uh, six inches to open that up. Okay. All right. Now, on this part here, I can push pull this up to create that centerpiece. Okay now we're sexy tight and right there we go okay so that's gonna be my top shelf and that was a pain in the butt just to do that right huh that was my fault I screwed up the first time okay now my plates uh, my bowls and everything are gonna sit on a shelf are gonna sit on a shelf um, here and here uh, and now I have a choice. I could have a dividing shelf where two separate sections, or I could uh, have a, a completely open shelf if I wanted to lower this piece down even more, but I don't. I want dividing shelves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this component here, and I'm going to grab the top part corner here and hold my control key down and drag a uh, <clears throat> a copy down right there and I want to go probably right at six and three eight in three eighths inches there um, let's go seven so if I type in seven enter it'll move down to there and now that uh, I have my parts and everything I can come in and do the same thing uh, first off I'm going to select this it is a component already you can see by the blue line I outlining everything I can come in here and I can explode these one last time and I probably should have done all this at one time but uh, you know the things you learn alright explode that and now I'm going to select um, everything except for this piece okay so all my faces and everything except for that part there 
and once again I'm gonna right click and intersect faces uh, with the model and what that will do for me is uh, once again if I were to move this out of the way uh, it creates those lines and everything for me okay so I'm gonna move that out of the way for a minute I'm gonna move that back out of the way for a second and uh, we're gonna take and clean this up some so uh, first one on this one I'm just gonna push pull and get rid of it and on this side same thing get rid of that now on the one here uh, I've got a three quarter inch uh, board and I got to get rid of that little rabbit there here I'll do that in just a minute but because I'm gonna end up splitting this into two separate boards um, but I need a center line I need a center line uh, that will um, you know tell me where my two halves are going but here's the thing I don't want I don't want to open if I go three eighths this way three eighths that way then that's just cutting the part in half right that, that makes no sense so uh, I actually want to be a about a quarter of an inch uh, let's go three sixteenths point one eight seven five and then the same thing on this side point one eight seven five and that will give me the line that I need to draw from here here let's do this let's escape there let's connect this line first got to connect this line over to that line there we go now we can come in and create that line there that line there and now I can go through and delete this line in the center all the way around and the reason why that line was created all the way around is uh, simply because um, the simply because the uh, simply because the shelf had that rabbit in there and uh, which I'm gonna have to remove or I'm gonna be cutting that shelf off but now let's go ahead and let's push pull this and let's get rid of that 3 16 inch side there and that 3 16 inch side there to create that part all right let's come back here now and let's focus on this part let's go ahead and go in here and all I simply need to do is take this and push pull this down to here uh, and then just delete those two lines okay all right uh, but I don't want to do that I do not want to do that I want to divide this up I want to cut this into two shelves uh, Laney you just said you want to cut it into two shelves let's go straight up and on this side straight up and let's push pull this six inches all right that's a little better okay let's get rid of that in that line so now I have two separate shelves I don't need this divider line here or that divider line there okay I got two shelves now Whee! all right let's go in and uh, let's take and get my components created again so G to turn that back into a component this one we're gonna be exploding those parts a few times uh, but uh, I like to have them and I see there's a you see there's an anomaly right here because that part is not unique when I divided it it got rid of the meat back here that's an easy fix uh, when I get this shelf back into place we'll go ahead and click and snap that back into place okay we still got to do some extension there but uh, we're gonna come over here and I'm going to take a line let's get rid of these guidelines we don't need them anymore they're just in the way 
so you guys and all can see. Uh, I just need to connect a line here to here and a line back here. Okay, and uh, almost there, guys. Uh, let's take and put a line from here to here. When you're drawing your lines, make sure you're inside your component. <laughs> oh, let's see there. Okay. And then push pull that down to there. Okie dokie. All right. Now I don't need that line anymore. I don't need that one either. And I don't need that one or that one. Okay. So, oh, what was the first thing I just said, guys? What the first thing I just said? I said, make unique, right? Make unique. And look, as I drew that all that back in, I did, I did the same thing with this one, right? Because I didn't make it unique like a goofball. All right, so we're going to make this unique, meaning that now when I make a change on this, it's not going to affect everything else. All right, so um, let's go into here and All right, push pull, let's push that back six inches. Push pull, let's push that back six inches. Push pull, let's push that back six inches. Get rid of all that. Come in here and delete this center line over there and the one hiding over here. Now, push pull this over to here. Push pull this over, oops, right there. And then bring that one over as well. And get out of there. All right. Jeez Louise Louise. Okay. So that's going to be uh, my shelf parts. Now, this part, this middle piece, is going to basically essentially be a two-sided part uh, because I had the rabbit on both sides. Um you know, and I'm going to have to flip it over and cut the rabbit on both sides. And, uh, or I, you know, if I wanted to, if I had a sled on my table saw, I could cut these parts out on the CNC and then I could, uh, you know, take it over to the table saw and cut the rabbits and, or the dados and stuff in there. But, uh, I'd like to try to, you know, make all this on the CNC. So this centerpiece will be end up being a two sided part because I have the grooves on both sides. All right. So now that we have that, um, I'm going to go ahead and add some color to this. It's not going to be a wood grain color. Uh, I'm just going to use a uh, color um, to kind of keep all the parts separate and stuff. Uh, let's go with a color. Let's go with kind of a maroon. Okay, so we see the two parts there. Okay. Let's uh, let's do one even better. Uh, this is going to be a solid piece, so we got three different three different types of parts there. Okay, now the fun part: the racks. Okay, uh, the front and the back racks and everything. Um, and uh, the front and back racks and all. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go into my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle there. And remember, these are one inch thick, and I'm only going three quarters, so it's going to give me a little quarter inch lip. Uh, so if I push pull this up, uh, I'm going point seven five, okay, uh, and then I'm going to uh, triple click on this to make it a component, 
because this one, I want whatever I do over here to be done to the same one on the other side. So when I move and copy this over, when I move and copy this over, uh, it will duplicate it. And then when I take and um, make an additional copy, I'm gonna hold down my control key uh, and uh, pull an additional copy out here. as well as this one. I'm gonna rotate those parts. Ah, give me my red one. Rotate that part 90 degrees. Same thing with this red one here or this one here not red one oh get on there I'm gonna go 90 with that and let's go ahead and park this in place so let's move that and let's snap that to there let's move this one and snap that one to there. Okay. Now these racks that I'm gonna make are going to, uh, the slits in them are going to be uh, the same. You know, so whatever I do to one should multiply on all of them. Okay, on all of them. So what I wanna do is, first things first, is I'm going to hide this part right here. And I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna push pull this out 3 8 of an inch. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Now, <clears throat> on these parts here, everything I do to that side will be done to the left side over here. So I need to flip this. Oh, you son of a gun. I need to flip this along my blue component. Are you gonna irritate me today? Flip along. Uh, let's see, I need to flip it along my red I need to flip it on my red okay and let's see if that uh, flipped the correct way if I were to go in here and push pull let me see which which side it gets extended see that over there that's good that's what I want all right control Z okay excellent my red axis I had to flip it along so that means I'm gonna take this part here and move it over uh, oh, not that far. Uh, move it over to there. Okay. I need to also flip this one. If we turn around and look at the back, you know, you see how I extend it out. I also need to flip this one along my red axis. And I need to move it. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my, uh, my clicks, my clicks. Come on now, there you go. Ending, if I hide this piece here, uh, I'm gonna be extending 3 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths. So we're going to uh, push pull this 0.1875, okay? 0.1875. And now I can go in and unhide all those parts and now I should have my 3 inch uh, rabbit on uh, the back and the front my 3 16 on my centerpiece back and front and then my 3 8 inch on the end back and front okay okay all right so now let's close that paint bucket there um, now on my parts once again I'm going to uh, explode these 
And this should be the last time I need to explode. So we're gonna explode that one, that one, and that one. And then with everything selected here, I'm going to deselect, holding down my shift key, that, that, there, those two shells. And I'm going to, uh, with everything else selected, I'm going to right click and intersect faces with model. And now I can come in and let's grab all four of these and hide them for the moment so we can see our joinery and stuff. Okay. All right. So I don't need these back lines. There's nothing back there. You know, that's just air. And all so now I have my lines for my uh, push pull and all that wonderful stuff so let's go ahead and do that uh, let's go into here and push pull this and get rid of that uh, let's push pull this back to there get rid of this one push that all the way to the front push this one all the way up to there. Push that back. Push, oop. Well, that works too, but let's stay consistent. Push that up to there. And then this one will push all the way back. And last but not least, this one we will push up. All right. So that gives me my joinery. Now, we're gonna be carving this on a CNC. So in Vetric, when I create these rabbits back here, I'm gonna to have to do a fillet in the corner. So the corner of my uh, back piece and bottom piece and everything fit in. I'm gonna to have to cut my fillets appropriately on these inside corners here and everything. You know, all my inside corners, I'm gonna to have to have a fillet. And I don't mind having a small little fillet there for the assembly and everything. All right, so now that we have that uh, and everything, let's go ahead and unhide my parts. And since my parts are the same uh, there, let's give them some color so we can kind of define them and stuff. Uh, let's go with a, let's see, what do I got? I got an orange, I got maroon. Uh, let's go with kind of a tannish color and let's kind of color those in okay sweetness coming together now the slots okay now the slots that's gonna be the important part and everything uh, on this okay all right you guys still with me uh, do I need to be like Emerald Agassi, bam, and wake you up? All that, you still with me? This isn't too boring for you because we're about to get into the Vetric. Well, all we got to do is draw the slots in one of these, and then uh, it'll do all four, and we're done with the design. Okay, so hang tight with me. We're, we're almost there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and uh, I'm going to hide these two parts here. Uh, I'm going to hide them for the moment. Uh, and uh, what's going to be important is that the way my uh, back panels and my bottoms here intersect with one another, okay? Uh, the way they intersect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw and the slits and everything are going to be all the same. Uh, but then I'm going to be, um, I got to create my rabbits on the back of these panels here uh, for the... Uh, two back pieces to go into because this thing is going to be joined, joined, joined. Everything's going to be locking together and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to hide those for a minute. I just wanted to talk about address that. And so on my slots, and let's go into let's go into this guy. We'll work on him. On my slots here, uh, we're going to have basically, um, if you recall, here. Let's see if I can do this. How good is Laney? Can he do this? If I go, um, if I go, ten inches. Nope, five inches, which makes a ten-inch diameter plate. Okay. If I go uh, push pull one 
eights. Right? Was that one eight? Point one two five. There we go. And let's grab another circle. And oh come on now, give me the center of my circle. There we go. Uh, let's see here. We'll, this will be kind of the lip right here. Uh, and let's push pull that out a little bit. Okay. And then one more circle. Let's find if I snap to here and I come over and snap to there, it should allow me to snap to the center there. And let's go with the smaller plate. Now, this is a rough, I don't, you know. Um, this is a rough uh, drawing. So, uh, and if I push pull this, this is recessed ever so slightly. Okay, now, now I should be able to take my move tool and, um, oops, let's try this. Let's take the move tool and, oh, are you gonna snap? Are you gonna let me snap to you? Control Z. Wrong one. I keep grabbing the wrong one. There we go. Um, are you going to make me do the whole thing all the way around? Hold on there, Hoss. Oh, come on, Lenny. You make the cone. Push pull that down just a little bit. All right, move. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, Lord have mercy, Laney, you can do it. They're like, what the hell are you trying to do? There we go. I was moving the wrong way. I was moving the wrong way. I'm trying to create that dish, that dish shape. There we go. Okay. So now that I have that, okay. Who, Lord of mercy. Now I've got my. I got two plates. Look at there. All right, let's move them over into uh, together. And let's rotate. It's hard rotating a plate 90 degrees. Let's see if I can do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to with it being rounded. Um. I don't think I'm gonna be able to rotate it, guys. Which sucks, I should've drew it on the... Nope. Ah! Uh, isn't that just brutal? Okay. Because of the rounded edges, I gotta find a straight edge to try to rotate this. Let's see if I can, let's see if it'll let me. If I come from here to here, go 90. That's good. Let's see if I can go I need, a, I need my blue ring, there we go. From here to here, let's see if I can turn that sideways 90. It's gonna be close enough. And if I move this. Okay, they're not exactly straight, but it'll give you the visual idea. So basically, 
Ah, so Viz, uh, I gotta figure out why my plates are separated. Let me make let me make this unique. Um, I don't know why everything is doubled, but uh, let's. Um, One more time. Explode. And with that selected, with that plate selected, make a component. And Explode that one. Make it a component. Two zebra components. Yay. All right, let's move this up on there. Now, you'll have to excuse my... Um, uh, drawing of my plate and all that, but you'll get the idea. This is just for visual, so you guys have a visual. All right, let's rotate. Let's flip this guy along uh, the red, so they're facing the same way. And um, let's flip him along the red once again. And let's flip this one. Along the red. that's the way I want them facing all right you get the idea anyway I'm not gonna draw all the plates don't you worry um, but these guys are going to fit in slots I want to make sure the slits are divided enough that the plates will sit comfortably uh, in things uh, and uh, that they will you know roll back into the slits on the back plate okay all that time we just wasted just to talk just to say those three words and uh, uh, have a visual all right let's delete that one and let's move this one out of the way we don't need him and let's hide him as a matter of fact okay so what I would like is uh, to go into this component here and you're gonna see you're gonna see those plates coming up on the screen here in a second again. What I would like is uh, in this component is I'd like to have a um, a nice little edge, you know, a hard edge before the slots start. And so uh, I probably want to either be three quarters or one inch. Okay, um, I think I'm thinking uh, three quarters would probably uh, do fine. So that's what I'm going to go with. 0.75. We're gonna draw a guideline there. Now, on the back here, this is gonna be rabbited. So not, you know, I'm going my, my three quarters, but I also want to, you know, my slots to stop. So I'm gonna go three quarters, three quarters. Uh, you know, we're gonna go that inch and a half. Um, so uh, we're gonna come out uh, 1.5. Is that 1.5? I don't think that was 1.5. Come on now. Oh, yeah, it was one more. One point five. There we go. Okay. Now, <clears throat> my um, guide here, you know, is uh, I'm basically creating kind of a, a nice little frame around everything. Um, 
I believe if I go uh, a half inch, that'll be good on the sides. So I'm gonna go 0.5. And when I say a half inch, I'm not counting the three eighths of an inch that it's recessed. I'm talking about the exposed, the exposed and everything. Um, and so if I go 0.5 on this side, uh, <clears throat> that, if I were to draw out my lines, could have just drew a rectangle and it would have been much faster, but you'll get it here. That is going to be my, um, my frame. Okay, that's going to be the frame. And now the grids are going to be in between there. And so what I would like to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I want this rectangle to be about the, the width of the slot that, that I'd like. And um, I believe my plate rim is around an eighth of an inch thick. And so if I let it to be able to sit down in there and everything I think I'm gonna go with um, probably about 3 16 so point oops um, it's gonna be 9.75 comma point one eight seven five enter okay that's gonna be that and now, if I take that rectangle, and I should be able to uh, move it and kind of space it how far apart I want the spacing to be. Let's say that's a half inch from left to left, uh, I'm gonna go five eighths. And if I hit the letter X and go one, let's go 10. All right, I should have went. Let's do that again. Let's do that again, because I, uh, I need more than 10. gonna move that and drag that holding the control key we're gonna drag that uh, 5 8 and X let's go You son of a gun. <laughs> there we go. One last time. All right, move. Slide this over. Hold the control key down. Slide this over. Um, I don't know. Seven sixteenths. Got to think about my back and everything. Uh, five eighths of an inch is good. And if I hit x15 enter x15 enter there we go shoe doggy all right so it didn't quite uh land my spacing i probably should have divided it up so it landed evenly and everything but it was close uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen fell off of the design. So I probably I'll adjust the spacing evenly. Vetric will be much easier for that uh, for me to do that. Um, but uh, basically, if we push pull this uh, three quarters of an inch, and if I Push pull that, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, you'll get the idea. And 
I know there's a way to do them all at one time, but uh, I'm not doing them all at one time. We're almost there. All I'm doing is pushing it down and typing in 0.75 um, and hitting enter to uh, basically remove that piece. And of course, even though this one isn't in the right spot, we'll still put it there. And uh, what I might do uh, for visual purposes is uh, delete that line, delete this little nub right there, and that little nub right there. All right, so now if we unhide our last parts, um, edit unhide all, you will see they finished rack. Tartar. Okay. Now, on the two back pieces, the two back pieces, I need to now make them unique. I need to now make them unique. Um, and uh, then I'll do the joinery for how they recess into one another. But before we do that, let's do, let's finish this up with, uh, let's select these four, this part, and this part, one last time, let's hide all of them um, so that I can select this and make it a component again because I'm all done. Uh, this one's got some little lines. Let's delete those floaters out there. And I can select that uh, middle piece, make it a component. And oops, select this last piece and make it a component. Edit unhide all and then now my two back pieces here I'm going to right click and make them uh, unique okay uh, and then I'm going to take this part here and basically be extending this down uh, three eighths of an inch okay so let's uh, hide this for right now so we can see this. I'm going to double click on this uh, to get into um, here and I'm going to just push pull and all I'm going to do is pull this down 0.375. Okay. All right. I'm going to click out of there. I'm going to hide this one and go into this one and push this down. 0.375, let's try 375. Okay, and with that done, now I can unhide everything. And then I can take um, these two here, hide them, because all I need to do on this one is come in and draw a line. Oops, first of all, let's double click on it. All I need to do is draw a line from here to here and then push pull this down 0.375 and it'll do both of them because they are still uh, one and the same uh, copies of each other. And now finally we can unhide everything and we've got our joints and all that stuff. So this is the plate rack that uh, we're going to be making. And uh, who knows, uh, you know, I have enough room if I didn't want so much room. What do I got there in my measurement? You know, uh, I could decide, you know, this is something I would decide as time goes, but I've got an opening of six inches. And if I didn't want that big of an opening or something, maybe I wanted to cut it in half or, or maybe measure a coffee, one of my coffee mugs that goes with the set or something, you know, I might be able to put in another shelf and then just lower this one down to this curve, uh, you know. Uh, but all in all, this is going to be uh, the shelf. And then the question of the day is, is do I leave it open to where the wall is exposed in the back? Or do I put a back panel, um, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, closes everything off and everything? Do I put a back panel in there? And if I do, that's going to change the dimensions of my shelves. 
uh, they'll be uh, you know uh, recessed and all that stuff and I think uh, my original design uh, that I had in mind was just to have it open you know an open wall hanger and all and, and everything all right so with that being said let's go ahead and save this file we're gonna save this as uh, we're gonna go into my CNC jobs I'm gonna create a new folder we're gonna call this plate rack and then we're gonna say this is just plate rack okay and now with that I can get into the Vetric software so let's go in I'm gonna be using Vetric vCard Pro uh, but everything that I'm doing here can be done in Desktop, Pro, and Aspire. Desktop, Pro, and Aspire. Now, before we get into the Vetric, let's answer a couple of questions that's popped up. i um, got a couple of questions that's popped up and everything before I create this. So, uh, spacing is based uh, from the rim to the base for width of the plate. Also, how much below the rim the plate recesses from the rim? would you not want uh, two shells for cups rather than just one? So everything I just said, uh, William, uh, you know, I after I get everything laid out here, I may decide that I want to do two shells and stuff, and I can do all of that in the Vetric. Uh, I can create all my joinery and everything. That sketch and going in SketchUp and everything was just to get a visual of what I'd like things to look like. As far as my plat plate rack spacing and everything, uh, so that the uh, plates um, sit down into the rack, uh, you know, similar to what we have here. Um, you can see the, uh, you know, the size of the uh, uh, lips or the, 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 the voids, you call them, and then the spacing apart, just very, you know, uh, small slats and stuff in there and everything. All of that I can do much easier in Vetric. Uh, with uh, the Vetric tools and stuff and everything and I'll do all that you know this the SketchUp file was just for the rough design just to give me a visual of my concept and everything and I can import these parts in and then I can make whatever changes I want to the geometry once I have them in there this is simply just to help me visualize in a 3d platform what I want my design to look like Okay, that's all it is. That's all it is. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and in the Vetric software, uh, I'm going to create a part that is, um, I'm going to go 24 inches wide by uh, 30 until I get all the parts in then I'll size it down so 30 by 20 by three quarters and uh, let's stop right there let's go back into that job setup I hit the uh, wrong button I work off the bottom of my material which is my uh, spoil board uh, and I work from the bottom left corner you would set your zero position your Z zero position and your XY datum your start position your XY home your XY zero Three different things, uh, names, three different names, all the same thing. Your datum, XY0, XY home, your start position, that all means the same thing. Okay? And I work from the bottom left corner of the material because of my particular jig and setup and everything. And all. Um, and uh, Nick, uh, real quick, uh, yes, you are spelling my name right. Uh, and how are you doing, buddy? Uh, and uh, again, welcome uh, everybody that's that's jumped in and joined and all. We're just now getting into, if you're just now joining us uh, and everything, we're just now getting into the Vetric side of this. Uh, we went in and drew a basically a, a basic, simple, uh, rough sketch of a plate rack to give ourselves a little bit of a visual uh, on this, uh, this piece here. Now we're going to bring those parts into Vetric and we're going to fine tune them, adjust them however we need. And everything so everything comes together so let's go ahead and uh, with our setup I will set this up as a two-sided job because one of my parts does have grooves on both sides 
And who knows, I might want on my outsides here, I might want to do some decorative floral V carving and all. I've got a CNC, I have the ability to do it. I could really, instead of this just being plain wood, I could really make this a sexy looking piece by adding some nice uh, flourishes or decorative designs all the way on the outside of both sides of these parts, right? That's the whole purpose of having a CNC to dress things up. This is in its roughest form. And, um, you know, this is just the shell. This is just a little layout to help for visual. All right, so it will be a two-sided job, and I will be working off the machine bed, as always, uh, from the bottom left corner, and I will be flipping my pieces along my Y axis. Not my X, but my Y. And again, you would set that up however you would, you know, feel need. So now let's go ahead and import those parts in. I'm going to go into Import Vectors. It's under File Operations, your fourth icon. And let's go ahead and import that in. And we're going to go into our um, <coughs> Documents, CNC Jobs, Plate Rack, and we're going to grab that SketchUp file. Now SketchUp has a dialog that it's asking me some important questions. You know, um, one, this is an exploded flat view. Uh, this is a, this is an exploded flat, flat view. It's all two dimensional in a sense. Uh, I do not have any radiuses or or uh, you know uh, uh, trim or anything like that that I need to worry about. That I would have to bring it in as a three sided view, front, top, and side. Um, this is going to be an exploded flat view. Uh, now it's asking me uh, what is going to be the largest face. What face do I want facing up? You know, being the top face and. Um, the uh, face you can originate it by material uh, or by color and I have a bunch of colors uh, in here and everything and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the software orientate auto orientate the faces and everything uh, if one or a particular face uh, doesn't come in correctly oriented correctly then I will go back into my SketchUp and I will paint uh, the just one face of each of my my project pieces uh, I will paint the inside where, where the joiner is exposed. I'll paint the inside of each of the parts and everything with a certain color using my paint tool. Uh, and um, that way it'll bring in that face and stuff. But in this case, we should be okay with an auto orientation. Now where there's arcs and circles and stuff, uh, or there are polygons and everything in, in, in SketchUp, I want uh, Vetric to create circles and arcs for that, to clean up those lines uh, for circles and arcs. Uh, on those uh, parts, I do want them grouped, uh, the imported parts. It keeps the kind of components in the same order or same, or together and stuff. And then components are, you know, are going to be um, uh, brought in together. I have a total of nine parts. And if we validate that, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. I got ten, and it's saying that it is nine. So one of the parts is probably not going to come in and we'll see which one it is and I have a feeling I have a strange feeling it's going to be this one. Oh, it's nine parts because it's not you see it's a one component it's not counting it as two separate pieces uh, there uh, so let's let's fix that real quick um, let's fix that real quick in here so we're going to uh, let's select everything right here and let's hide that for a second all right, this part is one component, so it was counting it as one part. What I want to do is I want to explode this uh, to break it up, and now I can come in and um, let's hide this part too, and might as well hide these two. I want to get everything hidden because I don't want to accidentally grab it all. But uh, I should now be able to come in here to camera standard view top. And I should be able to grab this part and make it an individual component, as well as grab this part and make it an individual component instead of one. And I can go in and unhide everything now and just save my changes. 
And if I go back into Vetric and import that plate rack file, I should have 10 parts. Okay, so let's go ahead and import them in. Okay, so as we can see, uh, the parts came in uh, great. All my joinery is, uh, you know, face up here. Uh, now here's that extra slat, right? That remember I said they didn't space out evenly. We're gonna fix that spacing in Vetric. Okay, we're gonna fix that spacing in Vetric. So the first thing I do want to do is we will focus on that. Let's go ahead and um, ungroup uh, this and let's get rid of. Um, let's get rid of that piece. Let's ungroup this, ungroup that one, ungroup that one. Okay, let's get rid of that piece. Let's get rid of that. And that. All right, now I only need, these are all uh, identical except for the, uh, the way they join and everything and, and, and you know the, the sides and their extensions and all that stuff. Um, so we want to, uh, let me get rid of these parts here. There we go. Uh, I do want to replace these inner uh, spacings here. I wanna, I wanna do my own in here. And everything uh, and then I will uh, copy and paste so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna delete these so basically I just have my frame right my frame parts and everything Okay, I do not want to get rid of my joinery. That's where my rabbits and all that good stuff go. All right, and uh, notice how these are wider at the bottom than the top. These are these are my two uh, side shelves, or, or back shelves, I'm sorry. Those are my two back panels here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just for right now, I'm gonna group that one together and that one together. Um, and, uh, I'll just uh, align them up. These two parts here are my bottom pieces. These two parts here are my bottom pieces. And notice how we're wider on one side than the other because that's the side that goes into the joinery. So I have a left and a right you know, side and everything. And once again, I'm gonna group just these independently and everything. And um, we're going to align them up you know, and all that wonderful stuff. Now, my spacing in the center here, um, my spacing is the same in all four. So whatever spacing I do for my um, plate rack dividers, I will copy and paste into all four of them, okay? I will copy and paste into all four of them, all right? Now I'm going to work on them, my spacing and all, because that's really the, all the work I have to do. And then we're going to uh, get these uh, nested onto our material uh, and uh, see how many little sheets of my 30 by 24 it'll take to uh, cut them out and stuff. And uh, we'll go into the two sided. But let's stop here for a second. We've got uh, Jeff is asking, uh, what fun would cutting dados on your table saw be when you can set it up? on your CNC, hit start, and then watch more Laney videos. <laughs> Absolutely, there you go. Um, but uh, yes, I, I totally uh, uh, agree with that sentiment. However, understand that uh, CNC 
uh, can do so many different things. I mean, uh, but it doesn't replace the other tools in the shop. If if something is a little bit, uh, you know, while the CNC is cutting out parts or cutting drilling holes or doing decorative V carving and stuff, if we have to do some, uh, you know, ripping down or dado cuts or things like that on a table saw or band saw or a chop saw, uh, absolutely, you know, a router table for rounding over edges, things like that. Definitely use those tools. Use them for what they're, you know, best for. Uh, but if all you have is a CNC, uh, all of this can be done on there. Okay, now let's talk about our dividers. I'm going to zoom in real tight on this because again, once whatever I lay out here will be copied to the other four parts. So uh, I'm going to go into the rectangle tool and uh, basically from each edge, okay, from each edge, uh, I'm gonna have that a slot start, right? So there's gonna be a slot that starts on each edge, and then I'm gonna need to, uh, you know, divide uh, the other slots up between. But let's kind of define our slot first uh, and everything. Right now, uh, if my plate, let me grab this plate, these plates again. Okay. Uh, I got a part here that's got a little bit of a dado in it uh, 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 for something completely different. But that slot right here, that dado, um, actually it's running with the grain, that groove uh, is a half inch wide. Okay, this groove is a half inch wide. Now imagine, now it's not all the way through, so I can't really, you know, imagine this, but, you know, if I, if I have that half inch wide and everything, my plates are gonna sit uh, down into the groove until you know it meets both ends, which is fine. I want that, that gives it more stability. I do, I do not want these plates to ever break. Uh, uh, they're ever, yeah, no. But anyway, um, so if that half inch groove, basically, uh, even though my lip is real thin, I want a little bit of spacing here so that that plate sits down, you know, sits down. And on my lip here, it, it starts to recess in a little bit, uh, you know, and we go in and stuff. So I, when it sits down and all, uh, I want a good amount of spacing. And a half inch doesn't look too bad, but I'd much rather it be like, Three eighths, uh, you know, three eighths, uh, uh, maybe a heavy quarter, but I'm gonna go three eighths. And let me move these plates aside. No, no, no. Bust one. Okay. So let's uh, take a sip of Dr. Pepper and get into this. All right. Okay. So I am gonna go three eighths. So 0.375 uh, by 9.75, and I'm gonna click apply, okay? Now I'm gonna take and I'm going to snap this to that edge so it's on that inside edge. And now I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm gonna hold down my control key and while I'm in transform mode, so when you, when you double click on a vector, it puts it in transform mode. Uh, you can also get to transform mode uh, whenever you open any of your transform tools or by the third icon on edit objects, which is transform mode. But you can the easiest way is just to double click on the part. When you see these boxes pop up, you're there. Uh, I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to grab this uh, bottom right corner and I'm going to drag a copy over to here. Okay, I'm defining, I'm defining that I want those slots on those edges. Now all my other slots will be spaced evenly between them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a rectangle and I'm gonna draw a rectangle in here just for temporary. Uh, I'm gonna draw a rectangle between those two slots uh, just for temporary and everything. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to take my a uh, little rectangle here. Again, go into double click and go into transform mode. And I'm going to drag out however many uh, 
plate slots that I want of this 3 8 okay I'm just holding my control key down and I'm just kind of I'm not placing them anywhere special I'm just dragging them out right uh, just dragging them out I'll be able to add more if I need to in a, in, in a, in a moment uh, here but I'm just dragging them out okay uh, let's grab that one and throw it over here okay don't let all these little rectangles and everything uh, you know uh, screw with your mind and all that stuff uh, our spacing will be defined here in just a moment all right so uh, and it'll be more even and it'll make sense here in a second so now that I have these uh, guys I'm gonna grab all of them okay all those rectangles I'm gonna grab all those rectangles and with them uh, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna grab that rectangle that I drew last that one that uh, and of course uh, we're gonna do that again because I held the control key not the shift key so let's do that one more time let's grab all of these except for the two end pieces just just except for the two end rectangles just these inside ones hold down my shift key and select my rectangle that inner rectangle that big one I drew last and now I can come in here and I can space those rectangles horizontally or vertically in that last selection and it will space them out evenly for me okay and so now you know my spacing is defined nice and even you know all the way across uh, for these uh, for these parts here now my question to myself is is do I want uh, basically um, this space that's the gap between each of those dividers that get you know that are gonna get pocketed out do I want uh, that wide of a spacing let's look and see how wide that spacing is and if I don't then I'm gonna draw more rectangles so let's get a horizontal measurement and let's measure Let's measure from here to here. And so it's almost a half inch, right? Half inch spacing. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that uh, maybe five sixteenths, uh, a little over a quarter of an inch spacing uh, would be plenty, um, you know, between each of the, the, the plates and stuff. Uh, a half inch seems wide if we were to look at this image if we were kind of to look at this image of this plate rack our inspiration here you see that divider line between each of those slots it's super thin uh, i would probably say uh a quarter inch at the most and if you look they've got and now i don't know what size this wall rack is so it's not ours it's not the size that, that we have so they're going to have much more dividers uh, and everything and then of course if we wanted that we would make things bigger right uh, they are gonna have much more dividers but you know they've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, probably about 24 25 you know different dividers in there you know but that little spacing that little divider there is quite thin so I'm saying uh, I'm thinking you know a quarter you know to uh, five sixteenths that's about where I'm where I'm at for me for my plate rack and stuff uh, so what I'm thinking here is is this is too much okay so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take um, let's get rid of this I'm going to take one of my rectangles and I'm simply uh, I believe that I could probably uh, to get down to that five sixteenths. I probably could get maybe three more in there. Okay, three more in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold go into transform mode. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to drag out three more. One, two, three. And they're all stacked on top of each other. I don't care about that because the software is going to space them out for me, but I got three extra ones in there now. Now, let's go in and select all of them once again, except for the two end ones. Hold down the shift key and select our outer rectangle, our, our border basically, and come in here and let's uh, space again. 
we go. And that looks uh, more like it. Um, you know, that looks more like it. So, uh, you know, we got our dividers here. So let's measure and let's see where we're at. Uh, let's go to our measure tool and horizontally from here to here. And so I just, I just under a quarter of an inch. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to balk about that, uh, you know, uh, 20 thousandths of an inch. I'm not going to balk about that at all. That's going to be fine for me. So we'll call it that. Okay, so we're going to have a quarter inch little divider rib. Perfect. Now that I have that, I'm going to take and select all of these now, except for this outer rectangle. And I'm going to uh, group them together. Group them together. And you can tell you don't have the outer rectangle selected because when it's grouped, you got your red line there. If I would have had that outer rectangle, it would have been purple as well. All right, now I'm gonna double click on that to put that in transform mode. And I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna grab this bottom left corner here, hold down my control key and snap that to there. Hold down my control key, snap that to there and hold down my control key and snap a copy up to there. And then I didn't get that one just right. Let go of the control key so you don't make another copy and snap that into place. Uh, this one looks good. That one snapped into place and that one did. So now we're done, right? Our two back panels and our two bottom panels with the spacing and everything are done. Let's get everything nested on our material now Let's get everything nested on our material now. And because I'm nesting, I need to uh, make sure that I group each of the individual parts. Uh, you know, make sure you group each of the individual parts so that it nests them together and, and doesn't throw anything off. So I'm gonna go in and uh, this one's by itself, he's by itself, this one's one piece, uh, that one's all grouped together, so is that one, so is that one. Okay, so everything's already grouped now. So now I can select everything and I can go into nesting. Now, if you have Vetric VCard desktop, you don't have the nesting tool. So you're just simply going to lay your parts out on your material, give yourself enough spacing, you know, move each part, you know, on your material and all. Do different layers, okay? This one default sheet right here, your whiteboard is your sheet. Separate each of the parts on different layers and then lay them out so you can create your tool paths and stuff. With nesting in the Vetric software, VCar Pro and Aspire, with nesting, it's gonna create individual sheets based on the size of my material to uh, lay out all the parts on their own sheet instead of rather than doing layers, it does sheets, okay? So for this, I am going to be uh, using a quarter inch diameter uh, bit, but the thing of it is, is on my slots here, because I do not have that quarter inch spacing, and that's one of the things you've got to take into consideration um, is, uh, I got an extra space right there. Hold on, an extra space right there. Hold on a second there, Halls. Oh, I was holding my control key down and I made an, I made two of them. I got a duplicate right here. So let me ungroup this real quick. Let's close this. So we're focused on one thing at a time. We got to ungroup this part. Okay. And um, on my pieces here, um, I have an extra part going on in here, right? And all that wonderful stuff, uh, you know, I've got an extra part. Then you see how it's the reason why it's an extra part is because it's not, I didn't uh, get everything moved over and centered quite well. So I need to double click and put that in transform mode and I need to snap this to that corner. Right there. Okie dokie. All right, let's group that back together. Okay, I didn't snap it. I had it snapped over in the wrong place. 
All right, let's go back into our nesting tool. Let's select all of our parts here. And so I don't have a quarter inch spacing. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, I do have I do have a more than a quarter inch spacing on my slits here, my slots, and everything. So a quarter inch bit will be fine for that. Uh, if I didn't, then I, what I was trying to say is if I didn't have a quarter inch spacing, then if bit is is bit is a concern, bit size is a concern, you're gonna have to you know make sure your plate size slots and everything because we're not we're not milling out the small slots, the you know the point two three, those are the dividers, those are the wood that's left. We're, dealing, we're, we're milling out the 3 8 slots, areas. Um, but quarter inch is going to be fine. Uh, my clearance. Now the clearance is um, <clears throat> basically between the parts after my router bit, after my router bit diameter, let me get a quarter inch router bit, 0.25, enter. Oops. When my router bit is, you know, on its right side edge cutting on a part, the spacing is how much of a gap, and let's go back into the nesting tool, how much of a clearance do I want between where my bit is and the next part, this space right here. Okay, it's taken in that quarter inch diameter, just like the diagram. You can see the diagram here and everything and, and how much clearance you want between those parts. Well, I would like to have a little bit of meat, you know, in between these uh, and everything. So for my clearance, and let me delete these two parts here, these two pieces. For my clearance, I would like to have a... Uh, five eighths of an inch, too many decimal points. Uh, I'd like to have five eighths of an inch clearance uh, between those parts. And then the border gap, how far away from the edge of my material do I want the parts? That is solely gonna be based on, that's solely gonna be based on if, you're gonna, if you've got clamps holding these parts down uh, and your clamps are going to be a certain distance, you know, holding that board down and you need to not carve into the clamps type of thing, then that's where your border gap, it'll keep the parts away from the edges of your board uh, a certain amount. Um, I clamp from the side with my cams and stuff, uh, but with this being a big sheet, I, I have a new waste board that offers me the ability to not only cam clamp, but mechanical clamp, you know, and, and stuff like that as well. So uh, I probably will keep them off the border and uh, let's go ahead and do a half inch border gap all the way around. Okay, <coughs> that being said, I wanna nest from the bottom left corner out and I wanna nest direction along the X axis, nest the parts along the X axis. Now, rotation, nesting the part options and all, rotating the part for best fit, yes, it can, I know that some of them are gonna be, ro needed to be rotated at least 90 degrees, so that's what I've got in here. I do not want to mirror the parts because usually in material, you've got a good side and a bad side, right? Uh, and my, my good face is gonna be facing down because I'm doing all the joinery, you know, on the, on the inside faces, basically. So that'll most likely be my bad face if I have any bad, you know, if I got one side that looks better than the other. And I do not want these parts getting mirrored. Um, and, and that way, you know, uh, my, my face's uh, orientation and stuff is incorrect. So I do not want to mirror for best fit, so we're gonna uncheck that. And I don't have any wasted material where I can allow one part inside of another. Um, I do have some uh, openings here, you know, uh, and, and everything, but uh, that's not inside of a part. So um, we will uh, leave that. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on preview. And so we've got our layout here. All right, so now on my uh, sheet, uh, two of my uh, dish rack panels, uh, plus one of my shelf boards could be cut out. Um, on sheet number two, uh, two of my 
dish rack panels and my top shelf. Uh, very, very, very top shelf is uh, cut out. On sheet three, uh, I've got two of my sides and um, one of the other piece of that lower shelf. And then on sheet four, I've got one of my other end pieces. Now, on one of my end pieces and everything, we have to remember or one of my uh, uh, side pieces and things, uh, we have to remember that the um, this one part is a two-sided part. Uh, you know, and most likely I will have the one that's all by itself here being my two-sided part because as far as the joinery uh, and everything, we've got our, our, our top rabbit, our dado, we've got our back rabbit and bottom rabbit on the parts. All of that is identical. Every piece is identical. So I can choose and I pick and choose any piece that I want. Um, to be my centerpiece. And I choose this one. The reason why I choose this one is because now I only have to flip one, one of the boards. Now, if I decide that um, I want to do decorative carving on my two outside pieces, which is sheet three, if I want to do decorative uh, V carvings and you know a nice little flourish or something on the outside, uh, you know, of my two parts, then sheet number three will also be flipped. So I'm only flipping two of the four sheets. The other two are single-sided carvings. The other, you know, and two of them are uh, double-sided carving, unless um, I don't want to do any decorative carving on the outside of the parts, which why wouldn't you, right? You got to see and see, why not dress it up? Uh, but if I didn't, then only one of my project sheets would be flipped. You know what I mean? So, but I'd like to do some decorative. Now we also talked about, uh, William uh, threw out um, the question, wouldn't you rather have uh, your shelf, uh, wouldn't I rather have two shelves rather than, you know, one big shelf, right? Wouldn't I rather have two smaller shelves and things? And if we go back to our inspiration picture here, um, you know, they've got just the one shelf and it's, it's low profile. We've got a lot of space, right? There's this low profile here on our inspiration photo. Theirs is low profile, just barely enough to cover the tops of their coffee mugs or canisters and stuff. And then, of course, a lot of their bowls can get, you know, are getting stacked and things in here. So it, the, this design really only calls based on this layout now for one shelf. Um, but we've got, we don't have low profile. We lowered that shelf down. If I lower that shelf down, and let's say that I measure from the inside of here to let's say right about here, I've got seven inches, you know, and I don't need seven inches. So adding a second shelf, not a bad idea. That means uh, it's gonna be in the center. So I'm gonna basically, uh, if I add a second shelf, uh, I'm basically gonna need two more of these parts right here, okay? And then I need to change on all three of my pieces all three of my pieces, I need to change the uh, position of this dado, lower it down, and add another dado where I want that middle shelf to be. So let's start with, uh, let's go to sheet four. Let's go back into our nesting. Oops. Go back into our nesting, and let's start with sheet four, the one that's by itself, so we're not getting confused. And whatever I do to this sheet, as far as placing the shelves and all, I need to duplicate to the other two, okay? So whatever I do. So first things first, on my guideline here, I'm gonna take a guideline and um, take a guideline and I'm going to snap right to the end of that curve, okay? That's gonna be my <clears throat> bottom. 
Now I'm going to decide from there where that transition takes place. From there, do I want my lower shelf to be right at that transition? Sounds reasonable. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to ungroup this part and everything. And um, I'm going to uh, grab this piece here, hold down my shift key, turn off this lower part here and that upper part. And I'm going to grab this part here. And I'm going to grab the bottom right corner of it and I'm going to drag it over and snap it to there. Now notice what happened here is um, when I move that part, it left this void here, it cut the parts in half. And it's just the way that SketchUp brought the parts in, the pieces and everything in. Uh, so what I have to do is I have to join this back together as one. So I'm going to select on this part here and I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to delete this span. I'm going to select this part and I'm going to delete that span. And I'm going to grab those two parts, get out of uh, node editing, I'm going to grab those two parts and simply join them back together with a straight line. The join tool is under edit objects. Second icon in on the last row is join with a straight line. So I'm going to join once, twice, click it twice to reconnect that part. Okay. All right. So I've got uh, a, my pocket here where my dado is going to be for my lower shelf. Now I want to clean dado. So I'm going to extend this rectangle out on both sides so that my router bit can cut cleanly here and give me a nice open dado. Okay. All right. Now I've got my rabbit here. Okay. I've got my rabbit here. Uh, on my rabbit, uh, that pocket, this is going to be a pocket cut, you know, three eighths of an inch deep. Uh, on that pocket cut, I need to hold down my shift key and extend that out as well. Okay. Need to extend that out as well. And then I also need to extend this up but notice I don't have uh, a top line you know where my board is and everything and all um, I don't have a, a top line there so I need to create that I need to uh, create that by Drawing a rectangle here. Oh, I was a little short. I was a little short. Okay. And now my rabbit, I'm going to extend this out because I want that router bit to come and clean up that edge. Now I've got uh, this guy to contend with. Um, I created a duplicate when I created this rectangle. It's not actually attached. You know, it's not actually attached to here. Okay. So I need to remember where my layout line is. So I'm going to snap a guideline there to help me because I'm going to now move this rabbit uh, vector over a bit so I can come in and trim away that line that that way it joins this piece all the way around we can get rid of the guideline now so you can see now that piece is one hole and everything and that was stupid of me to get rid of that guideline because that's where i needed to move that box back to so hold on a second let me uh uh get that guideline draw back on here okay now i need to trim away that line Okay, and then now I need to move, and I'm going to grab this right, double click on it, put it in transform mode, grab it right here, and just slide it right over. Okay, now I can get rid of the guideline. Okay, guidelines help you, you know, keep layout and everything, you know, where things are supposed to be so you don't screw up and, uh, you know, throw a joint off in the wrong place. All right, so now I'm going to measure. Uh, between my bottom of my top shelf and the top of my bottom shelf and I've got seven and a half inches okay so my bowls when sitting on the shelf my bowls are exactly 
me get uh, one and an eighth inch tall. These little bolts are one and an eighth inch tall. Now imagine that they are gonna, you know, stack. And let's say I do five. Okay, so I'll have uh, five and five eighths inches worth of you know bolts I might only be able to do four right you know four and uh, you know bowls or what have you four and four and a half you know so but I've got seven and a half inches here and uh, so now I can decide where I want um, you know another shelf to be and in my case uh, let's take and move I'm going to use the move tool over here and I'm going to move relative and I'm going to move on the uh, x-axis uh, left and right x-axis and it's going to be a negative because I'm moving to the left and I want to uh, before I move I want to make a copy of it that would help huh so uh, you can use control C and control V to copy and paste or you can right click and copy and paste uh, like I'm doing here so I'm just going to right click and copy right click and paste now I can move that copy uh, and let's go um, and this is the bottom of my shelf let's go negative five inches okay and <clears throat> now if I were to measure from the bottom of that shelf to here, you know, uh, four and a quarter, because I got a three quarter inch board, right? It's three quarter inches wide. So four and a quarter. If my plates are one and an eighth inch is, then um, you know I'm only going to be able to get a certain amount in there. And but let's measure see what we got for this shelf and see if it's from the bottom to the top of that shelf we're at two and a half inches okay now at this point I could say you know what do I want to use uh, you know um, a half inch piece of material this or that you know a thinner shelf no I don't uh, I want to keep everything three quarters so I don't have to you know carve you know my shelves on different pieces of wood and stuff but uh, uh, so now I got to decide um, if I did four of my bowls at an eighth of an inch, uh, so that's going to be four and a half inches of space that I would need, plus a little bit of uh, clearance for air gap. You know, I don't want to jam them in there. I don't want them scratching up and jamming in there and all that stuff. So if I move this over another quarter of an inch, that's just going to just barely going to give me four bowls stacked on top of each other. Uh, if I move over a quarter of an inch, but if I move over three eighths, um, then that'll give me an extra eighth of an inch of air, you know, uh, which is fine. But what that means is, is uh, you know, without having this uh, as one shelf, what that means is I have to take the whole stack of bowls out just to get one. And is this shelf going to be practical? Uh, that I'm using it, uh, the, the dishware that I use all the time? No, it's display. Uh, that's it'd be used for family gathering special occasions things like that so I'm not going to be dragging those bowls in and out in and out so that doesn't bother me that much so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over an additional an additional um, three-eighths of an inch okay and what that will uh, give me now is I should have uh, plenty of clearance. I should have uh, four and five eighths of clearance, and uh, then I'll have a smaller shelf that might be like a little knickknack shelf. It could be for my small plates. Extra over overflow of small plates could get stacked on there. I don't know. You know something, right? Uh, you know it could be something because I'll have the top shelf. I'll have the top of it to sit stuff on. I'll have the bottom shelf, and then I only have that only gives me two and a half inches. Now, I could say, you know what? I want more than two and a half inches because maybe I want to throw some other things in there. I could make this bigger, right? I'm not stuck with this design. 
I could pull, I could come in here and uh, select um, this. And by the way, let me get a measurement here uh, just so I can, it should be 3 8 but you know, yeah, 3 8 I could take and I could extend this um, out. I could say, you know what, I want to give myself, I'm going to just use my rectangle tool uh, to be a little quicker. Uh, you know, I want to give myself another, if I've got two and a half inches of space, or two and a, uh, here, hold on. Let's get rid of this. Let's remeasure that because we just moved that board. Let's try to hit the mark. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, so two and an eighth. So if I want to give myself, uh, you know, maybe I want two shelves that are four and five eighths. Well, then I can come in with my rectangle tool. And uh, if I have um, two and an eighth and I want to go four and five eighths, uh, that's another two and a half inches. So I'm going to draw a two and a half inch. So I'm going to go 2.5 comma 6 enter. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take uh, this guy here and I'm going to move him down to the end. And in my move tool, I'm going to just move him back relative, relative 0.375. Uh, now I can come in with my scissor tool and trim those together and extend that out. So now I can have it. Now I have two shelves there, you know. And those two shelves, if I did my math and everything correctly, uh, I should have two shelves of the same width. Okay. So all I have to do is make 100% certain that I do exactly the same with my other two pieces, okay? Um, and one of the easiest ways to do that is to come in here and select this, right? Because both are ident all three are identical, right? Uh, all I have to do is select this and copy it. Go over to my nesting tool and go to sheet three. And on sheet three, I'm going to uh, delete this one and paste the new one. Got to move this one down a bit. Everything's got to move down so it can fit on the board now. group that together uh, let's get this on the board do, 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 do. all right let's delete that one right click and paste and on that one I'll group it together but I'm gonna hit the number nine key um, hit the number nine key wait hold on Okay, my let's move this up. My uh, measurements can't be rotated, so let's ungroup that and let's get rid of those two measurements. I don't need them anymore. All right, <clears throat> and the number nine key, and I need to. actually just mirror that. I don't need to rotate. I need to mirror it, flip it vertically. There we go. Okay, let's get this onto the board. And let's reposition my... All right. 
Okay, so now all three of my parts are exactly identical. I've made the changes. I'm gonna have two, uh, you know, four and five eight shells there, and that's gonna be my finished piece. Now, what that does also is that gives me a lot of real estate, a lot of real estate on these sides, the side pieces and everything to do some decorative carving, you know. Uh, whether I want to do a 3D model carve, I got to be careful on the 3D model carve because I'm going to have rabbits in there and stuff on that. But if I want to do some V-carve decorative carving or what have you, I just got to remember that on my three-quarter inch piece of material, three-eighths of an inch in these three spots is going to be missing, right? So don't make it too thick of a model if you do a model or some sort and all. But, you know, it could be some florist or something. All right. So now we got to go back to sheet uh, four real quick and make a change. Uh, we got to get our part here on our board. Okay. And I am leaving, I'm not centering and everything. That leaves a lot of material here that I could cut. You know, there's no waste in the shop. I could cut something else out of that. There's plenty of material to cut out of something else out of there. All right, uh, but we do need another shelf, right? We need two more shelf boards. We just added another shelf. So let's go into uh, sheet one. Let's go into nesting and let's go into sheet one. And let's take and copy this guy. Uh, regular copy, not copy to the other side. And then go back into uh, sheet four and right click and paste all right let's get that one in position try to minimize my waste as much as possible hold down my control key drag another one and i'm gonna rotate that one 90 degrees and let's see if i can bring that there See what kind of room I have up here. That brings me a little too close to my edge. So I'll just, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I don't. I, I want to. If I'm going to cut them out, I want to cut them out of here. So, all right. So I've got some, you know, strips here that I could throw anything in. And now it's the perfect time. By the way, uh, if you're ever doing that, guys, think about nesting objects and stuff. Not nesting like we're doing here, but I'm talking about nesting projects. Uh, so this is the shelf, right? Uh, this is the kitchen rack, and um, I've got dead space here on this sheet. I've got dead space on sheet one. I've got dead space on sheet two. I've got some space in here on sheet three. If I have any smaller projects, smaller projects that need to be uh, cut out and they're, they need, they're, get, they're getting they're, they're cut out on the same material or something, uh, gang them up. You know, gang those projects up. Uh, you know, fill in those sheets as much as possible. Optimize that runtime. Optimize those cuts. Knock them out. You know what I mean? Uh, you've got some dead space in there, and that's the perfect time for any smaller uh, type items that uh, uh, we can fit in. Right? Right. Optimize. Optimize. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so um, Jeff, uh, I believe it's Jeff, right? Jeff Resorter, uh, brings in a good point. Uh, even though I'm going to have an open back panel, um, I still need a back piece for um, mounting it on the back of the, uh, you know, the back of the uh, wall. Now. Let's go to the design for that one. Now, if I'm going to do a back piece here uh, that is going to be used for hanging on the wall, uh, you know, I don't want to just hang it on this shelf and everything. Uh, that back piece is uh, going to run the whole span here. Uh, 
So what that would mean is, uh, and it's only gonna be small. Uh, and for me, I'd most likely do it as a French cleat. Uh, if I did it as a French cleat, uh, then that would require um, me to uh, use my table saw for that. So let's just do a regular one where we're screwing it to the wall. Uh, for this part, uh, I only need it to be uh, about an inch and a half wide. So, um, oh, overshot it a bit. Bear with me a second, guys. All right. Okay. And <clears throat> that part, that part uh, is going to most likely be three quarters of an inch as well, you know? And so what that means is um, that on this back shelf here, uh, I have two choices where I just butt the top shelf to that back piece. Probably, uh, you know, um, probably be good if we put it in a rabbit, right? Uh, let's uh, give this a color. Okay, so what that means is, is um, one, uh, I need to extend this side out. So let's hide this side and go into here and push pull this to there. Gonna come over here and hide this one. Get into there, push pull that to there. Okay, and then that means that this middle piece, one of those middle piece, um, that is going to be recessed back the full Monty. Uh, so the full three quarters. So push pull. I uh, can't do that. Hold on. Escape. Got to draw a line here and there, and here and there. And push pull that back. one inch or three quarters of an inch and let's take this part here and hide it real quick Let's try that again, uh, there to there, and there to there. All right, so now I gotta push that up, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.375
Push that up. 0.375. Get rid of that line, that line, that line, and that line. Okay. So there's going to be a notch taken out of the back of the one. Uh, there's going to be an inside cut here, so there will be a dog bone fillet right there when we cut it on the CNC. We're going to have to remember that. Uh, and then let's go ahead and unhide uh, all these parts. Now over here. Over here, over here, over here. We're going to go into this part. And we're going to push pull that up. Oops, wrong way. All right, and then we need to get rid of uh, that area there. So let's hide this, hide that one so we can see what we're doing here. Let's get rid of this line, get rid of this line, okay. So we've got that notch cut out of that centerpiece, but now we need two little uh, notch rabbits uh, cut out of this piece here. So what we're gonna do is uh, we'll do one at a time. Let's zoom in here and kind of tilt that so we can see what's going on here. We're gonna double click on this and we're gonna draw a line uh, from here to here. And from there to there. Okay. And then <clears throat> if I hide this piece, we can now push pull this back to there. So once again, we're going to have a dog bone fillet here for that inside corner when we go back into the vetric. Okay. So let's go to the other side. Let's unhide that part so I can use it to help me draw my line. Going to line tool from here to here. And then come from the front and go up to there. Space bar to finish. Hide that part. Push that back to there. And get rid of that line. All right, get out of that part and I can get rid of these two lines as well. They don't need to be there. <clears throat> okay, so now we've just added in, we're gonna have dog bone fillets on these inside corners on all three of these upper parts, but we've just added in uh, the part uh, on our top shelf. We've got another rabbit now that's gonna be three quarter inches wide uh, that we've got to draw in in Vetric. Uh, we've got a another piece of joinery here which is one and a half inches tall let's get some measurements because I'm not going to re-import the files in we're just going to go in and draw it um, we've got let's see here uh, three quarters of an inch in by oops one and a half three quarter by 1.5 okay all right and then this one is the full three quarters 
um, all the way up to, let's measure that, one and seven eighths. 1.875. Okay, so one of our parts is going to have the rear notch taken out of the top, uh, one and eight, uh, one and seven eighths uh, by three quarters. Uh, we're going to notch that out with a dog bone fillet. Uh, one is uh, from the rabbit on the one. We're going to come uh, down uh, three and a quarter uh, by three quarter inches. Okay, and let me make sure I got that right again. Uh, one and a half by three quarters, sorry. 1.5 um, <clears throat> by three quarters. And that will be the same on the other side. Again, dog bone fillets to be able to cut those square cuts for that piece to fit back in. All right, let's unhide that. Unhide all. And so we're gonna have a piece here. It's just gonna be a solid piece of uh, material. Uh, we can cut that out um, with, the, with the CNC as well if we're cutting out all the other shelf boards already. It's one and seven eighths by um, 20, uh, 18, eight, nine, 10, uh, 12, 12 foot, 10 inches, 12 foot, 10 inches. No. 12 inches plus 8 is 20 inches. 20 inches. Uh, sorry, 20 inches. Why 12 foot 10 inches. 20 inches. So 1 and 7 eighths by 20 inches. So now we got to go back into the Vetric and we've got to make that change. So this is my middle board. This is my middle board. I'm leaving these two to be my two end pieces. Okay. So let's start with the middle board. That one just gets uh, completely removed out. Um, one and seven eighths by three quarters. So we're gonna draw a rectangle from the corner. That's going to be 1.875 by 0.75 and click apply. And uh, I, I had the Let's snap it to there. I'll show you how to avoid that when you're sizing and stuff. Um, you know, when you're, when you're, you're, I'm sorry, not sizing. When you're drawing your rectangle and you make changes, see how I have it at the center? I would have wanted that at the bottom left corner when I was making that size adjustment and it would have sized down to that corner and kept it snapped there and everything. Okay. So on this part here, I want my router bit to be able to clear uh, past it to give it a nice clean cut on both of these ends here. Okay. And I need a dog bone fillet. I'm using an eighth inch bit, so a quarter inch dog bone fillet. Oop, that's a regular fillet. Dog bone fillet right here to give that bit somewhere to escape so it makes that corner turn and it gives somewhere for the corner of my square piece to go. Okay. I do not want to have to put an eighth inch radius on my square part there. So that will take care of the joinery uh, replacements and everything for that back panel for hanging. Now we're going to go back in to sheet three. And on sheet three, we have, we've already got a rabbit here. We've already got a rabbit here. And our rectangle, or, our, or the remaining part of our rabbit, is one and a half inches by three quarters. One and a half inches by three quarters. So we need to uh, size that, not move, size it. 1.5 by 0.75. Unlink the X and Y so we can make that adjustment. Um, and let's get that corrected. We need to snap that to there. Once we have it in place, then we can make the uh, size adjustment and all we're doing so we so our pocket you know cut can go. All we're doing is we're, you know, uh, cleaning this out. Now, here's the cool thing. We're going to take and we're going to extend this out to there, okay, because this is all one big pocket wrapping around the corner and all here and everything. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to trim these uh, you know pieces together and everything. So we've got we're going to have this end piece. Let's ungroup that. And on these two parts here, we're going to trim that, which will join it together, and that'll be the one big pocket. Okay, so that three quarters of an inch. Uh, by inch and a half all added together that's going to be that back panel so if I had a three quarter inch uh, you know board and everything you know coming in that three eighths of an inch so on and so forth uh, you know it'll go there okay let's undo that control Z. all right so we need to do that up here as well mm, rectangle tool and we're gonna snap here and we're going to, uh, this is 1.5 comma 0.75 enter. Okay. Now that we have that, we're going to extend that out to here. We're going to ungroup this uh, part and we're going to trim creating that pocket vector. That's the vector pocket there. Okay. Now, I with this back piece, I got to have a dog bone fillet here. So the corner of my back piece has a place to go and here. Okay, for that joiner. All right. Now, on my uh, let's go back to sheet four since that's the one I have the most space on and let's draw in that piece we have a 20 inch by one and a half inch part so we're gonna go 20 by 1.5 That's going to be that back piece. And if I wanted to, I could drill, I could put the holes for, you know, where it's going to get drilled on the wall and all that stuff. You know, I already had them pre-drilled in. I could put keyholes in there uh, if I wanted to do keyholes and whatever the case may be. But I'm going to just uh, drill and uh, screw it on the wall after I get it all leveled and everything. So we'll, we don't need to pre-drill that. But we could, you know, you could uh, put some quarter inch holes. I just... Um, you know, it depends on if your studs are, you want at least one stud in there, right? Uh, so it depends on if your, you know, studs are uh, every 16 inch on center, every 24 inch on center, things like that. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what we've got here. Um, William retracted his message. All right. Hi Sylvia, Sylvia's waving, hello. All right, so we got those in there. We've got our extra part in here uh, that's going to be you know, for that. Uh, the only thing left that I need to do is, uh, let's make sure I got all my joinery and everything correct. I need to put some dog bone fillets in a couple more places. Uh, I need one here. And Bear with me a second. Okay. On this pocket here, <clears throat> I need to come in. Bear with me a second. Okay, 
uh, the way that um, SketchUp brought in or, or Vectric brought in the SketchUp file, my rabbit is basically separated from you know my back piece and everything here. So I need to make this back piece whole, uh, and we're going to do it on the other the other two pieces as well. So let's do that right now. Uh, first things first is. Uh, this piece basically turns 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and comes around rather than going straight down. So this part right here, I need to duplicate it. I need to duplicate it, so I'm going to go copy, paste, okay? This part now, I can uh, extend out so my router bit can clear the uh, uh, profile. Um, and it won't let me do that. Bear with me a second. It'll let me do it this way. Now it's trying to stretch the whole thing. All right, with that copy, let me go into node editing mode and delete this span. Delete this span. So I'm deleting the two spans. Um, the top and the bottom. Now it's you won't see them go away because it's a, it's the copy that I just cut. Uh, and if uh, if you need different colors and all for different layers, uh, it'll make sense in a second here when I extend these lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to draw a line down here, straight out. Okay, straight out to here, over to here. Make sure I line up with that and there, and I'm gonna join that together. Um, what this is gonna be is, this is, oh, I gotta extend this one, hold on a second. Extend tool, extend. Are you gonna let me? So I've got my uh, oh, there's a uh, I got to go into node editing. There is a span right there. It was throwing me off there for a second. Let's delete that span. I could tell because one line was orange, one line was pink. It was hard to see. Uh, I should probably change the color of this layer. Let's change the color of this layer. Uh, let's go black. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I had a red color uh, on there, guys. Um, all right, now I can extend this line down to here to connect that together. And that's going to create um, my, when I join it together, that's going to create my pocket. So this is going to be my pocket vector, okay? That's going to pocket out to create that rabbit. And the reason why it's wider than my profile is so I want my router bit to, you know, uh, clean past it. Now, I don't need to waste that much material, you know, on this, uh, you know, if I didn't, you know, want to. I could uh, come in and, um, you know, bring this in a little bit. But you see what happens when I do it, it tries to move the whole thing. So I'm leaving it as it is. Now, on this piece here, I need to connect or cut the vector. You know, I need to cut this vector that goes all the way around to there, and I need to join it to this part. Okay, so I need that. You know, I need this vector to join and everything. So basically, all I have to do is um, come in and trim, trim. Uh, you know this away and what I need to do first before I trim away is I want to move this down one notch and over one notch so I have you know something to trim to uh, so let's go in here and let's trim that line away that line away that line away okay now I want to move this back into position up one over one okay and it didn't quite get there so let's make it go there okay and how I can know if I'm in the right spot you know is I should have a total of three quarters of an inch 
from here to my profile. Okay, let you know you're in the right spot. Over here as well, and I should be in the right spot from here to my profile, you know, that should be a vertical measurement, not a horizontal. <laughs> Three quarters of an inch. Okay. All right. So let's create some tool paths so things can get uh, moving along while we're in here uh, so you can see what's happening. So we've got uh, this guy here. He needs a he needs a dog bone fillet right there. So let's go with a dog bone fillet right there. And he needs to that router bit needs to come out and clear this a bit. But the way this part is drawn, if I stretch this out, it's going to stretch all of this out. Uh, so I need to come in and go into node editing. I need to cut the vector here and here. And on that vector that's selected, I need to move it up however far I want. And I simply need to hold down the shift key and rejoin this together with a straight line twice. Okay. All right. This is my pocket cut to cut out that lower rabbit. What that rabbit is, is the rabbit here. For my back, where my back panel and my side panel go. That's this rabbit right here that we're cutting out that pocket. Okay, on the bottom and the back. That's that pocket. So that pocket cut is going to be three eighths of an inch deep. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. And since uh, all of these, except for my two lower shelves, right? My two lower shelves are not three eighths; they're only three sixteenths. Uh, you got to remember that this is the middle piece. So this top, but this top part is also three eighths of an inch deep, and it needs to be joined with this piece. So let's do that real quick. Let's take and. Uh, Join that there and let's trim these bad boys up. Not like that, don't do that. Uh, there and there, there and there. Okay, so that pocket and this pocket can get calculated. Okay. Then I have uh, these two pockets here. They're going to be three sixteenths of an inch deep. Point one eight seven five three sixteenths of an inch deep. And then I have a profile cut on these parts here. So we have a profile cut going three quarters of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. Uh, I want to add tabs. So I want to put at least four tabs on each part. Okay. I do not want this one on the curve. I want to come up into the straight area there. Um, that's good. All right, and I want to add ramps. I want to add a zigzag ramp, uh, and I want it to be one inch long, and we'll calculate that. So now if we preview uh, all of those tool paths,
Okay. So let's take a closer look at um, this part here. Now, remember, this is a two-sided part because of this lower piece here. So I do have to flip it. I got to draw my alignment holes and all that. But this rabbit here, or uh, not rabbit, this dog bone fillet will allow my square piece to uh, fit into this joint here without having to radius or round over one edge or something, you know, to get it to fit. Uh, extending those vectors beyond the profile line allow my bit to go beyond that pocket area and everything so that way my joints I get nice clean dados when this part gets cut out if I would not have extended them then I would have gotten these rounded radiuses in here on my actual part and I would have had to chisel them out and things like that um, you know and square them up by extending those vectors a little bit uh, it gives you a nice, uh, you know, uh, allows that bit to clear that uh, profile cut. Same thing here by extending that vector out this way, it allowed that bit to clear that profile cut so I get a nice rabbit all the way across the top and everything. Okay, so I've got my two three sixteen inch deep pockets, my two three quarter inch pockets for my uh, lower parts, and everywhere that I need, I have um, dog bone fillets on those inside. Uh, and outside or inside corners, whatever you want to call them, inside of the cut. All right, so now let's go back to this part and let's do this. Let's set this thing up uh, pro appropriately. I need to add a some alignment pin holes. So I'm gonna go just somewhere right here and I'm gonna put a quarter inch, I use quarter inch dowel pins, um, uh, wooden or metal shelf dowel pins. And so I'm gonna go there and then just somewhere over here. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, it doesn't have to be in line. I'm just gonna go somewhere in this dead space right here and put another one, 0.25. Okay, now um, on my profile cut, because it is a two-sided part and everything, I do not wanna cut these parts all the way out on one side. I wanna halfway on one side halfway on the other so it's going to be 375 on the profile cut depth 0.375 and I want a total of a 1 8 inch tab so I'm going to cut this in half since I'm going to be cutting from both sides and make this 0 0.625 a 16th of an inch and I'm going to recalculate that cut what that's going to do is um, let's get the alignment whole toolpath created so my two alignment holes, that's going to be a drilling operation. And uh, I'm cutting into the material on this side, so it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch deep. I drill with my quarter inch end mill retracting and using pecking, retracting above this cut start depth. And this is going to be my board. I'm going to go sheet, I forgot to name these, sheet four board here hold on side one board alignment holes underscore 0.25 em in mil okay we're going to calculate that out i'm going to take a quick second and rename uh, these two files here this is sheet four Side one, uh, pocket one, point two five in mil. Sheet four, side one, pocket two, point two five in mil. And pro sheet four, side one, profile, 0.25 in mil. Okay, so now everything is cleaned up. I've cleaned myself up. Everything, I've got my alignment pin holes in there. I've got my uh, tool pass name properly. Uh, I've got to go up and save some of this work so I don't lose it all. So let's go in here and save the work. 
uh, plate rack. I'm not saving the toolpath, just saving the design file. So I don't lose, if the power goes out or something, I don't lose it. Um, okay, so sheet one or sheet four in my case is done. Done and done. Uh, I need to, or on one side of it at least. Now I need to come over and take all of these, uh, select everything, and uh, except for the two measurements, don't need them, but I need to copy this to the other side of my sheet, copy to the other side. And I need to flip over to that other side, okay? And this is my centerpiece. Uh, we gotta remember, this is my centerpiece, so this side also gets cut out, and that reminds me, we gotta go back, we gotta go back. This pocket that's 3 eighths of an inch deep, too deep, this is my middle my middle rung, uh, middle divider, whatever you want to call it. So it shouldn't have been in there. Uh, as a matter of fact, this pocket right here can get deleted altogether. This one can be opened up and changed to the 0.1875. And all of these vectors, since they're all the same depth, can be the same. It's the middle rung, so it's important uh, that uh, that's only like three sixteenths of an inch deep. Okay, three sixteenths of an inch deep. All right, now we can flip back over to the other side and do the same thing. So this pocket, this guy here. Okay, uh, this is a pocket cut, three sixteenths of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill. Uh, we're going to, uh, I do want to add some ramps. Uh, we'll do a one inch ramp. Remind me to go back and add a ramp on the other one too. Um, this is going to be sheet four still, but this is side two pocket 0.25 end mill. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get our alignment holes. Now these alignment holes get cut in the wasteboard. Not on the back side of your board. They get cut in the waste board. So on these drilling, I only I only drill a quarter inch into my waste board. I got a three quarter inch waste board on my table. I'm drilling a quarter inch into my waste board and uh, still doing pecking and all, but this is my sheet four. And I don't even need to say side two. Uh, I simply need to say waste board alignment holes. That tells me that this gets run on the waste board, 0.25 in mil. Okay, calculate those. All right, that goes at the top of the list there. Okay, uh, my Pocket cuts. I thought I just did this one. Uh, sheet four. Pocket point two. Uh, sheet four. Side two. Pocket point two five in mil. All right, let's calculate that. All right, and then finally for this sheet to be completely done, we have a profile cut. So the profile cut is on these four objects here. Three eighths of an inch deep, a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line, add tabs. All of our tabs are in the correct place because they were copied over from the other side. Uh, we're going to add a ramp, one inch uh, ramp and uh, this is going to be sheet four, side two, profile, 0.25 in mil. All right, so if we were to cut out uh, view all sides on this, ooh doggy. 10 o'clock, we gotta move along, we gotta move along. So, 
we're at the we're at the tail end of it where we're creating tool pass now we probably should uh, maybe another 15 minutes and we'll be done we'll ask and we'll see if there's any questions or anything all right so uh, on those parts uh, we should end up with eighth inch tabs uh, cutting those parts out uh, both sides we've got our alignment pin holes and uh, three sixteenths of an inch pockets uh, you know for that center rung okay so that one's done let's go back to side one and let's get let's jump over let's get this uh, done real quick uh, let's go to uh, sheet three I'm just gonna go four three two one all right, I've got to clean up some vectors uh, over here. Uh, if you recall, my profile doesn't run, you know, uh, like it should, right? So just we got to rinse and repeat what we just did last time. Now I could, if I wanted to, I probably could uh, go in there and um, uh, copy and paste that other leg over, you know. But uh, yeah, why why draw what you can copy, right? So let's go back to sheet four real quick. Uh, we're gonna grab this vector, uh, not these two, and not my alignment hole. We're going to uh, turn off those. We're going to copy this. Copy. Not copy to layer, copy to the side, you know, uh, or anything like that. We're going to copy. So we're going to copy that. Roger, Roger, copy that. Okay, three. And we're going to uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that, and we're going to paste I'm gonna group that together so uh, because when I paste this next one, um, it's uh oh, I didn't need to do that. I need to mirror that. Mirror, Laney, mirror, mirror. Uh, flip it vertically. And I'm going to group that together. Leave yourself enough room where that pocket's going to be cutting out in the top of your other piece. Leave yourself enough room that you're not cutting into it or anything. All right? Even if we've got to be close to the top edge of the board, my clamps are going to be on my sides. So as long as I've got clearance on my sides, I'm good. All right. Let's go ahead and let's uh, let's um, create the tool pass. Let's ungroup these. Ungroup. Ungroup. Um, okay. So pocket cuts. Now, the difference with these... Um, these are the end pieces, okay? These are the two end pieces, and they're one-sided projects unless you're doing decorative V-carving on the other side or something. But uh, the the uh, these are the end caps. So all three of these pockets are going to be three eighths of an inch deep, okay? So all three of these pockets are going to be three eighths of an inch deep. Uh, so we can select all of these. And we're going to go pocket cut 0.375 quarter inch end mill. This is sheet three. It is our uh, side one, just in case we want to do, you know, another side. It's going to be our pocket and it's a quarter inch end mill. We're going to calculate that out. 
and then we have a profile cut. <clears throat> profile cut. Now, at this point, you know, when you're doing your profile cut, you decide if it is going to be a two sided project, you can do your decorative carvings and all that, then you're only cutting halfway through. If you're not going to, if it's just going to be a nice, plain, you know, uh, clean piece, then cut all the way through, right? It's, you know, you're not flipping anything, cut it all the way through. Uh, I'll set it up as a two sided job, just, you know, as a two sided part that, you know, and I'll come back and see if I would do any decorative. But I, 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 we're not going to do any V carved decorating on the other side today. It's already 10 o'clock. So, uh, but I'll still set it up as a two sided thing. So this is sheet three, uh, side one profile, 0.25 in mil. We'll calculate that. <clears throat> All right, let's get some alignment holes in here. Let's uh, get a quarter inch diameter alignment hole. We'll throw one here and we'll throw one there. And let's select both of those. And drilling operation. Uh, this is in the board for side one, so it's three, seven, five. Uh, this is sheet three, side one. I don't need that. Board, all I need is board alignment holes. 0.25 mm. Calculate that. All right, let's move that up into the ranks. It, uh, alignment holes up here that goes at the top. That's the first thing we do. Alignment holes goes up above sheet three. That's the first thing we do for sheet three. All right, so that's done. Let's go ahead and let's take these uh, vectors and let's copy them to the other side copy to the other side and um, if I'm not mistaken on this uh, add tabs I forgot to add my tabs uh, and ramps tabs and ramps I'm recalculating this toolpath uh, so let me before I do let me go through and do my undo copy to the other side uh, and um, let's uh, go back in and add tabs because I, you know, they're already in there from, you know, this was a copy of the other piece. Uh, add ramp and just simply recalculate that. Now, if I take these vectors and copy them to the other side now, uh, those tabs will get copied over. So copy to other side and let's switch over to the other side and let's create the tool paths. So first ones first, let's go with our alignment pinholes. Drilling operation. Uh, this is going to be sheet three waste board alignment holes 0.25 end mill. <clears throat> uh, select all of our pocket vectors. No. New, 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 new. Delete. Delete. There are no pockets on this other side. Delete. Delete. So all we have is a profile. Profile. And then V carving if you want to do some kind of decorative design, you know, in those areas you could. All right, let's uh, grab that. And. I got two open vectors right here. Um, and I could tell that by if we if we look at um, if we look here, you can see it's a little bit darker pink, but if I deselect this, uh, where's it at? I saw it. I know I saw it. Uh, I know I'm not seeing things. Yeah, it's right there. See that black line? So if I select both of these and then I turn this off. Should leave that selected and I can just hit delete to get rid of it. Okay. Um, hold down your shift key, select your vectors. 
uh, and this is a profile, three eighths of an inch deep, uh, outside of the line, add tabs, tabs are already there uh, to match the other side, add ramp, I'm doing a one inch ramp, it saves some, extend the life of my router bit and save some wear and tear on it, and this is sheet three, side two, profile. Calculate. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the uh, only two toolpaths, unless I did something decorative or whatever, the only two toolpaths I would have uh, uh, for this one is um, the bottom side, no rabbits or any, no no pockets or anything like that. You know, that's the end pieces and everything. And then um, on the top side. I should have my grooves and rabbits and stuff with, for my joinery and everything. Okay, so we got our rabbits, and then we've got our profile cuts. Uh, you know, cutting them out. So that's one thing we got to remember. All right, let it uh, finish up. <clears throat> okay. So one side of our part has uh, the cutouts three-eighths of an inch deep. The other side is clean, uh, except for if I ever wanted to do any decorative V-carving. Just remember, you've got three-eighths of an inch dados over here. Uh, so whatever you're carving on this side, you need to limit that cut to, you know, so you're not cutting through, right? Uh, and all that wonderful stuff. All right, let's go in and um, let's, uh, so sheet four and three are done. Let's go to... Uh, sheet two. Sheet two has my top shelf in there, which has a rabbit. We got to add in the new rabbit along the back for the um, for the that new back piece that we added in. Uh, you know this new back piece up here, this yellow back piece and everything. Uh, let's go ahead and edit, unhide all of this. Um, but we got to add in that rabbit across the back here. So um, doesn't matter what side really, uh, you know, one side or the other. So let's go in and create a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to be three quarters of an inch tall by 20 inches. So 0.75 by 20 inches. Okay. And, um, 0.75, Okay. Now, uh, this is all going to be a pocket cut, and uh, you know, and everything. So I could actually join them together. But before I do, I want to uh, extend this a little past my profile line, so it cuts. And then I also want to extend this a little past my profile line, you know, and uh, let's un undo that, Control-Z. Um, extend that, hold down the Shift key so it does both sides. And now I can trim, I can trim uh, you know, uh, this T together, basically. I can get rid of this line here, uh, and I can get rid of this line and this line, and that line, so that now I have this T pocket shape, you know, that I'm gonna be cutting and all. Um, now, I should have extended this out uh, before I trimmed everything together. So let me do that one more time. Let me back up. Um, I want to back up because I need to extend this. Hold down the shift key so it does both sides at the same time. Just a little bit, not much. And now I want to trim those together. But see, if I wouldn't have done that, um, if I wouldn't have done that, uh, if I would have tried to extend those two end caps out, uh, after trimming these and joining them together, it would have stretched this middle dado. Don't do that, right? So 
let's go ahead and clean this up. Okay, so I've got a pocket cut here and I got an extra little vector hiding right there. All right, so I got my pocket cut uh, and that is the only uh, pocket cut that's gonna be, you know, uh, three eighths of an inch deep. So let's uh, now notice what what joined up here. Um, notice on my T here that you know uh, my T is not this shape here. It did not join with this shape. Uh, I've got these outer rectangles and all kinds of crazy stuff and all. Um, that is a no no. Uh, I don't want to do that. So I got to figure out what's what and where my two endpoints come together uh, and where they're joining and everything. And most likely they're going to be right here on these two corners. So I need to go into node editing mode and I need to cut the vector here and here. Okay. Uh, that way I've got this duplicate line right here. You can see this line, this pink is coming right around here and dead ending right there. I can delete that in here. I'll double click on it so you can see it in transform mode. That vector right there needs to get deleted. I have a similar one on this side where I just cut it and that needs to get deleted. Okay. And so what I should have is a profile cut here and I should have a pocket cut here. So these two vectors, this one, and this one need to be joined back together as a closed vector. Okay, I should only have those two vectors, profile and pocket. So this is sheet number two. Let's go into our pocket cut here. And our pocket cut is gonna be three eighths of an inch deep, quarter inch in mill. And notice how it already has this stuff filled in. It's rinse and repeat on a lot of this stuff uh, because everything is the same. So this is sheet two. Uh, and this is only a one-sided uh, part here, so I don't need to put in the side. This is just going to be pocket and uh, 0.25 end mill. Calculate. Reset that to a blank board. And then uh, we'll do our profiles all together uh, at the end. Uh, so we'll leave that profile alone for right now. And what I'll do is I'll turn on solid view here. So all the blue areas we've already calculated, right? So uh, let's go over here now and let's look at uh, what we've got going on with our vectors and stuff. Uh, let's ungroup this. Oh, not delete. Ungroup. How about that? Uh, right click and ungroup. And... Um, or you can, uh, the letter U key on your keyboard or ungroup is the menu over here, any one, either way, okay? Uh, these inner vectors here are grouped together and we need to ungroup them. Okay, and so let's look at what we've got for joinery. These are the bottom panels. So there is a three-eighths of an inch on both sides here. There's a three-eighths of an inch uh, pocket cut cut here. Okay. So if you if we go if we refer back to our design, uh, if I un uh, if I hide these two parts right here, uh, that is this pocket cut on these bottom panels that we're looking at in those vectors. That's a pocket cut. So on our pocket cut, let's go ahead and. Let's, uh, I'm gonna extend past my profile line and hold down my shift key on this one and extend past the profile line just a little bit. Uh, that'll give me a pocket for there. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Ungroup all these parts. And on this pocket, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and extend both sides a little and the left side a little. Just the left, don't move your right. That's where your join is. All right, so I've got these two pockets. Now, these two pockets are also three-eighths of an inch deep, so we can actually add them in to our pocket toolpath that we just calculated. So I just reopened this pocket toolpath here, and we're gonna simply just recalculate it. Okay, 
So now we've got our pockets done for sheet two. All right, now we've got our pockets here uh, for our rib cutouts and all that stuff. And um, I'm going to, uh, there's a rectangular vector behind these. Uh, I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna delete uh, the inner rectangle here. I'm also gonna delete that as well so you can see those ribs a little bit more defined and clear, you know? Uh, let's do the same thing over here so it's a little bit more defined and clear for you. Uh, I'm gonna delete that so you can see uh, the ribs a little bit more defined and clear there. And so on these pockets, on these pockets, these are going to be all the way through the material. Uh, so we're going to do a pocket cut, 0.75 inches deep, quarter inch end mill. Uh, we're going to uh, do an offset cut. We're going to add a ramp. And uh, this is going to be sheet two. Pocket two. 0.25 end mill. And if you wanted to be more specific, you could call it dish slats or whatever, you know, what have you. But uh, we're going to calculate that. All right. So let's preview uh, the visible tool pass on those two. How you guys doing? Everybody still with me? Everybody go home yet? Everybody is home, but everybody uh, give up on me yet? Let me know if you're still there. Throw some things out in the. If you got questions, start typing them now. Because as soon as we're done with these last tool pass, we're done. Uh, so uh, start typing them now. If you have questions that need you need answers for. Okay. All right. So now uh, we have our profile cuts. Our profile cuts are the last cuts that we do for sheet two. Uh, and that's going to be a profile toolpath. This is not two-sided. It's only one-sided, so it's cutting all the way through the material, 0.75 inches deep. We're going to add uh, tabs to this, and I do want 1 8 inch tabs, 0.125. Uh, and I'm going to click on Edit Tabs, and I want at least four tabs on each part. I do not want the tabs to start at the starting point uh, and uh, I want to add those tabs and I'll put them in perfect and except for one uh, a little close to the corner let's uh, take let's go back into the edit tabs and let's move him over a little bit I don't need him so close to the corner this one as well there you go make sure none of others are close to the corners good and let's uh, <clears throat> sheet 2 profile 0.25 end mill calculate all right preview that all right Sylvia's still with me William's still with me all right so we've got our bottom racks and our top shelf done Okay, let's go back over to our design now here, and we've got one more sheet, sheet one. Okay, sheet one, very similar to sheet two, except for we only have a pocket and a profile. We don't have any more rabbits on this side or anything, you know? So, uh, once again, uh, I'm gonna ungroup these parts. We only grouped them together when we were uh, nesting and all. And once again, I'm gonna delete this rectangle here so you can see more defined the individual slats and here this is the rectangle that goes all the way around this inner area we're going to delete that so you can see those slats more defined uh, we're going to select all of these i'm holding my shift key down and dragging uh, to collect all those from left or right to left and we're going to create a pocket cut three quarters of an inch deep quarter inch end mill uh, i got my ramp in there and this is sheet one pocket 0.25 in mill calculate okay and 
and uh, then we're going to go in and select our three profiles. And the profile cut is going to be three quarters of an inch deep. Uh, I want to add tabs. I want to add tabs. Sorry, let me zoom in there. Uh, edit tabs. I want four tabs, uh, not on the start point, and uh, drop them in. One, two, three, four. Everyone's in a good position, not near a corner or anything. So uh, we can get my ramp in there. I'm doing a zigzag ramp, one inch long. And this is going to be sheet one profile, 0.25 end mill. Calculate. All right, we can preview those uh, visible tool paths, and that creates all of the tool paths for uh, this shelf project. Uh, the only thing that we did not do with this shelf project is on the two side pieces, do something decorative. Uh, I'll leave that to your imagination uh, to go in and, and you know uh, carve some nice little v-carved design or something and all but uh, that is our bottom rack or our uh, uh, back racks and our one shelf board and everything there but um, if we come in here we've got all of our parts like I said the only thing we didn't do is on our two end pieces do something decorative on the back side we've got all of our tool paths named sheet one sheet two three and four everything is nice and organized and then on both sides um, you know everything is nice and organized and uh, the uh, only two of the sheets four and three are two-sided projects unless um, yeah that's it only those two sheets even if you were doing, doing some decorative it's still only two-sided projects and um, the uh, you know we're nice and organized now we're gonna go up and we're gonna save our work you know this is the end of it. we're gonna save our work and then we would come in and save your tool pass. Um, and all of these tool pass use the same bit. So for each sheet, each side of each sheet, you can save those tool pass as one file. <coughs> when you're in the save tool path, make sure you uh, check up here, output all visible tool pass to one file and check off the three individual items for the sheet make sure you're in the right sheet you know except for the wasteboard alignment holes that does not get saved in the wasteboard alignment holes does not get saved in uh, wasteboard alignment holes are separate they get carved separately they get carved in the wasteboard not in the material so do not save that or bundle that in with the other two but these two uh, sheet four pocket and sheet four profile we can save together sheet three um, profile will be by itself and sheet three wasteboard holes will be by itself but if we go to the other side all of sheet four even the alignment holes because those get carved in the board all of sheet fours can be saved together all of sheet threes uh, can be saved together two one so on and so forth okay all right um, so uh, someone just asked a great question. What is the current machine time to do all four sheets uh, and, and everything um, on this? Now, based on my speed rates and everything, uh, you know, my uh, just to give you an idea, my tool is set up to quarter inch tool is cutting an eighth of an inch per pass, running at 50 inches and 55 inches a minute of the feed rate, 20 inches a minute on the plunge on my 2440. Uh, so based on that and the step over and everything, uh, your total run time for all four sheets uh, would be about six hours and 58 minutes. If we broke it down into sheets, uh, sheet four is one hour to do uh, sheet four. Um, sheet three hour 46 minutes sheet 2 that's those individual slats and everything and all 3 hours and 6 minutes uh, it's going to be the longest one and sheet 1 
uh, is uh, 2 hours 39 minutes. On the back side, on the two two sided projects and everything, um, the oh, they're all in there. It's already in there anyway. Okay, at everything. Hold on, let me make sure we got all those checked off. Let me go to sheet one and check off all those. Okay. Total runtime is seven hours, 15 minutes for this project based on my feeds and speeds in my machine. William, seven hours, 15 minutes uh, for all four of the sheets. And again, the sheets are um, 30 inches along the X axis, uh, 20 inches along the Y. And if I were doing these out of solid wood and everything, um, you know, my shelf boards and all would be solid, not plywood or, you know, um, you know, edge banded plywood or anything like that. If I were doing these out of solid wood, then I would be breaking this out even more. My three big pieces would be, uh, you know, um, in a separate project. And then my individual smaller pieces uh, would be um, you know, in individual projects, not all together nested as one. And I would be still using a 30 inch long by 20 inch panel that I have glued up. Okay. Uh, that I've glued up. Okay. All right. So a quick explanation on, on your zigzag ramp. So let's, uh, let's go look at our profile cuts here and let's zoom in. Okay, let's see if we can get to where you can see these. All right, so at the start, let's zoom in a little bit more and let's slide that up. Okay, so my pass depth is an eighth of an inch per pass, uh, William. And the ramp, I have a one inch ramp. Uh, so one inch uh, back and forth, zigzag motion. And what this does is, is it's going to slowly zigzag instead of plunging straight down to an eighth of an inch and then cutting around, you know, the profile plunging down, cutting around, plunging down, cutting around and leaving a witness mark and things like that here. Uh, my router is going to come in and it's going to slowly drop a sixteenth of an inch over the span of that, uh, that uh, one inch length. And then it's going to zigzag back and drop another sixteenth of an inch over that one inch span. And then when it reaches that depth, then it's going to move that eighth inch depth, you know, that first pass. Then it's going to move around and cut. Then it's going to slowly drop a sixteenth, slowly drop a sixteenth till it gets to that next eighth of an inch and go around. And it's zigzag. And it's working less wear and tear on the tip of the bit and everything, a little less work. It's, uh, you know, working one side of the material with that zigzag motion. Uh, we don't have a straight plunge, you know, bearing in, you know, dulling the tip of our bit over time and stuff. And we don't get, uh, you know, witness marks and all. Uh, so uh, that is a zigzag motion. You know, you have zigzag, you have smooth, uh, you've got uh, lead ins and lead outs, which, you know, we've talked about before. But uh, the zigzag ramp helps extend the life of my bit. It's not plugging in, dulling that tip. Uh, quickly and stuff, you know, burning it up and all, depending on how fast I'm plunging. And it uh, less wear and tear on the bit. It's taking a little less cut as it gets down to that eighth inch pass depth. Then it goes around, down and down and around, down and down and around, you know, when it gets to each of those passes. That's a zigzag. Um, and uh, yeah, anytime you can add ramps, do so. It helps extend the life of your bit. Ramps are a good thing. They're not a bad thing. Ramps are a good thing. Ramps and lead ins are a good thing as well too. Leads. Uh, we'll talk about leads one night. All right. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, it's 1042. We were at it for a long time. Um, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, it was well worth the time and you. it's going to be a cool project for you. Uh, and like I said, I was cutting this out of solid wood. I would still be cutting it out of the most likely the same size panels. Uh, and um, I would be 
you know, uh, gluing those panels up. Otherwise, if I wasn't didn't want to glue up a 20 inch panel, maybe I have a smaller machine. My size of my parts, like my shelf board, uh, shelf boards, you know, they're uh, um, six inches wide. You know, so that's roughly a uh, one by eight. Uh, you know, one by seven would be six and a half. So I could do a one by seven. Uh, I could do a one by seven. Uh, it might be six and a quarter, one by seven. But uh, uh, you know, I could do a one by seven uh, piece of material. So a seven inch board, uh, you know, would cut out. I could probably get out of a long, you know, a couple of long boards. Uh, you know, that's only you know one by seven, uh, one by eight. Let's go one by eight. A one by eight. Um, I could get my top piece, uh, this little top piece here. I could get all of my shelf boards out of those. Okay, I could get all of my shelf boards out of those. Um, if let's see here, if I look at uh, sheet number one, my panels—they're all four the same size. Uh, and so, if we were to look at the size of that, it's uh, roughly um, nine point eight inches, uh, nine—you know, point eight one two five, uh, nine and thirteen sixteenths, basically um, by. 12 and 3 eighths so uh, I could get them out of a 1 by 10 board nope 1 by 12 1 by 12 board right I could do you know instead of four sheets 20 inches I could do a 1 by 12 you know and I could get all these you know out of 1 by 12s you know uh, all of my slats and my shelf boards uh, but if we look at our side pieces if we look at our side pieces and wrap this up uh, let's go to sheet four. <clears throat> On our side piece here, that side piece, if we go into our, oops. <clears throat> that side piece is 12 inches wide by 26. So 12, a one by 12 wouldn't cut it because uh, that's only 11 and a quarter um, or 11 and a half, one of the two. Anyway. Uh, 12, uh, you know, uh, 12 inch boards. So I would need to at least add on to that panel or maybe to do uh, two uh, one by sevens or one by sixes. You know, I could glue those together and all uh, to make my panel. So long story short is lay out your stuff and lay out to the size of the panel that you're going to be cutting on. You know, if you want to do all this out of solid wood, you have a choice. You know, you could make up four 20 inch panels by 30 inches in length. Uh, and do exactly what we got going on here. Or if you're like, no, I'll just want to, I'll, I'll cut everything I can out of my one by twelves, right? Because you can get all of them except for the three parts out of one by twelves. Um, and then the three parts, you would glue up, you know, two of those one by twelves together or whatever, you know, to make your side piece. I wouldn't do two one by twelves. I would do like one by sixes, one by eights. Um, you know, less chance for you know flex and warp and all that stuff. But uh, because your seam line is going to be somewhere, you know, out here, especially on this lower part, you're going to have a seam line there and, uh, you know, could be a potential fragile area. And my plates are too expensive for that fragile area. So I may just do my uh, end pieces and middle piece out of plywood and edge, you know, edge uh, trim them with, uh, you know, edge banding or something. But anyway... Long story short is, is this does not have to be made out of plywood. It can be made out of solid wood too. Uh, you may have more than four sheets that you're doing it out of or four boards, let's call it, that you're doing it out of uh, because of the way you have to lay the parts out. You would just lay them out accordingly. You know what I mean? So just, you know, use your, use your creativity with that as far as thinking about it. All right, everybody. Uh, I want to thank you for sticking with me this long, long late hour in the evening on this Monday night. Everybody's got to go to work tomorrow. Uh, and I don't see any questions pop up. So until next time, guys and girls, see you soon. Have a great day. Yeah, great night. And a good day tomorrow. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. 
You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.